Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy What If Entertainment here with a new what if. And in today's what if Okay, yeah, in today's what if, we're going to be doing what if not that dang. What if Deku was the reincarnation of Hawkeye? I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. Thought it was Adolph. And I'm sitting in the hood. If a nigga want smoke, then you know where I'm at. The clock got a switch. If a nigga act up, then he get the whole clip. Then I feed him the Mac. He tried to run, I was walking him down. Ended up with a box seven shots in his back. My niggas like bullies and piss. If I tell him to go, then they're ready to go and attack. So let me get into the press, which is what caused this video. Now you guys know that uh, I believe it was it was what like almost a whole year ago from now. I posted a poll. Well, not a, I don't think it was a poll. I'm not sure, but I posted a bunch of thumbnails and the community tabs, and I told you guys that those will be coming, and they still are, but not at this moment. Um, except for this one. This is one of those what ifs that was supposed to come, and this is because of my love for archers. Really, especially like in the um. DC and the Marvel Universe, I do love me a good archer, but not more than I love me a good speedster. But I was recently on Disney Plus just scrolling, trying to find something to watch, when I found something quite interesting known as the Fury Files. And well, it gave me some press presents to Hawkeye's origins. Now, I already knew a bit about Hawkeye due to this game that I used to play when I was little. I'm not even sure if it's still available on the Google App Play Store because it was not available on, um, on the Apple app store on the app store so i was like yo i remember this game telling me i'm not sure if this is accurate because it could be my memory could be a bit off about how hawkeye was i think he was an orphan who was raised in a circus with his brother who you know bk i think it was either i think it was bullseye um hawkeye was raised by was raised with bullseye um and I guess this, this really as much as I remember, I do remember him say something like being raised in a circus. But with the Fury Files, I learned that he was raised um, by a family of criminals who um, would raise Hawkeye along with several other children after he was being, after he'd been orphaned into becoming a criminal, but he chose the hero path. And I was like, this sounds like a good idea to mix these two origins that I think I well, the, the, these two bits of information that I have, and to make them into a what if. So, without further ado, with you now knowing my, my reason for this, let's get into it. So, this what if takes place, well, not pretty much everything actually relatively stays the same up until Izuku's fourth birthday. You see, after, um, well, after, well, actually, after Izuku's visit to the Quirk Doctor. You see, after going, um, after learning that he was quirkless, Izuku had been a bit down. He had never given up on his dream of wooden yet, but he was still a bit down. So his mother decided to take him to the circus that had been visited, that had been visited in the, um, that was going to be visiting the city. And well, when she arrived there, she told Izuku that she brought him here in hopes of cheering him up, saying that she knew that he didn't have a quirk, but she says hopefully the circus um, will cheer you up at least a bit, so that you won't have to think about it as much. And maybe we can find a new way for you to still be a hero. Unbeknownst to Izuku and Inko, the circus people have been looking out for people like this, as they smiled. They would go on to enjoy the circus, Izuku more or less enjoying the um, acrobats and the archers. But when they went home, unbeknownst to them, they were followed. And that in that night, Inko was murdered. When Izuku woke up, it was the next morning, but when he went outside, out of his room, he found his mother laying there in a puddle of blood. He immediately knew what had happened and called 911. Well, not knew exactly, but he knew his mother was in danger, so he called 911. And when they arrived, they told him that his mother had sadly had died last night, and when he had called her, she had already been dead. Izuku was extremely saddened. As the um as the police had given Izuku a bunch of I uh, told Izuku that they would help him pack his things and place it in a certain in a storage uniform to receive later, before telling him that he'd sadly have to go to an orphanage. And well, weeks later Izuku would have been adopted. Now I'm not sure about the adoption process in Japan, but we're just going to say it goes a lot 
it goes a lot faster. I'm because I'm pretty sure like I know adoption does take a long time. So this is just me being informed about the adoption process. So when Izuku is adopted, he's adopted by the people. He remembered them from the circus. They said that they heard what happened and were saddened to see a kid like him, saying that they were all orphans and they would love to take in someone like him. Izuku was, you know, happy. Maybe with these people and the training that they went through, he could probably use that training to become, to train to be a hero. He'd gather his things as he traveled Japan with these people, but he quickly became um, came evident to Izuku that these were no, not just circus people. They were criminals. They robbed the city. They robbed banks all across the city during the time of the circus, because they always had a major police and hero escort around them. Because they were um, cause, um, they weren't really considered quirkless people. There were quirkless people along with people who had extremely weak quirks, who were commonly attacked in this in Japan. So the um, so they constantly hired pro heroes and decided to use this. Well, it's been for like years that they've used this to well, use as an opportunity to rob banks under their noses. No one had ever figured out it was circus people because, as far as they knew, they were always there. So Izuku was saddened that he had found he found a family again, but they were criminals. He wanted to leave, but he realized he couldn't because they were highly trained. So when it came time for his sixth birthday, Izuku had been taken by what was his adopted parents and his big brother Bullseye, who had um earned the nickname in the circus as Bullseye. They had begun his training. Izuku, they they knew from well before Izuku realized they were criminals that he had taken an interest in the acrobatic part along with the um archers. So they began to train him. And unbeknownst to them, Izuku had a keen skill for archery. Izuku never even knew he had this. And over time they saw him. He improved so much that he never missed a stationary target. And could really shoot uh could hit targets exactly in the center from miles from not a miles away from um from long distances he quickly gained the name hawkeye from them as they called him and over time he began training they trained him to actually be able to fight in hand-to-hand combat which he was surprised by because apparently they used it to take out people who got in the way <clears throat> But he also did learn from someone else. It was the sword user. Uh, I think it was like the person. Like I'm not sure if this is actually like a part of this. Because I don't know what they're called. But it's the people that you can see like stuffing swords down their throat. And then bringing them up without any blood or things like that. Apparently this person knew how to use a sword really well. Along with was a better hand-to-hand user than most everyone else training it. And apparently he had taken a liking. Well she had taken a liking to Izuku. And began training him extensively. And by the time he was 13, he had become stronger than mostly every, well, actually stronger than everyone else there. And he was a lot more skilled than them. He was sort of a prodigy as Izuku had always given his all and even gone beyond that. Remembering what his, what all might, I remember the model of UA, who they put a couple shows on for. Their model to go, motto to, motto to go plus ultra, to go beyond plus ultra. And he'd always done so. By the time he was 13, he had finally had enough. The entrance exam um, was in around two years from now. Or a year from now. He was 13, 10, well, yeah, around two years from now. And he had to leave before he was caught up in a scheme, in, in, in another one of their schemes. And they grabbed Izuku. They were robbing a tech store who apparently made specialized um, weapons for, uh, well, actually, experimental specialized weapons. And one of those weapons being a bow, well, not really a bow, but like more like special arrow tips. Well, arrows and arrow tips along with technology that goes around with the bow. They, the, when they robbed the company, Izuku seen this. And the pair seen Izuku for taking interest in it, stole it. They gave it to Izuku to tell him to do a test, couple tests to blow up the, uh, to blow up that of the lab. Izuku knew exactly where to hit to make sure that there were no casualties as he had cased the entire place. 
He drew his bow back as he let it go. The arrow whizzed through the air, hitting its mark and exploded, causing the building to erupt into flames. But thankfully, he, where he hit it was so precise to where no one out of an explosion wouldn't cause any much, much damage to anyone and they'd all get out of there relatively safe. It wouldn't be until they were closer to their way home that Izuku, they noticed that Izuku seemingly had a duffel bag with him. They asked what was in the bag. Did he find any other technology? Izuku, who was gripping the quiver along with the bow in the duffel bag in hand on his shoulder, would tell that he was sorry for what he was about to do. They wonder what he's talking about. They seen him quickly draw a bow before pointing it and um, exploding the vehicle they were in. He jumped out of the vehicle at the last moment, but that explosion had unknowingly killed his brother, his adoptive brother, and his pa and adoptive parents. Mizuku looked down with a solemn look. He had killed at such a young age, but they had been training him to do so. So, what would Izuku do? <clears throat> So after like making a rough landing and seeing the um I'm gonna say it's like a very large armored van. Um I am gonna say it's like a decommission armored van that they armored or something, I don't know. Seeing it blow up. So Izuku was sign. He would reach into his pocket, having acquired this not long ago. It was a burner phone. He'd make a call. It was one of their parents' pro hero con. It was one of the circus's pro hero contacts. He called them and and it would connect them to a random hero nearby. Surprisingly, the hero that it connected was All Might. All Might would say, "I am here." As a voice, it seems like a young child asked All Might, "I need you to come here." To, as he give his location with the police force, with the police force, he said, "Police." Police force. All Might would not. All Might would say that he'd be right there, young child. He'd ask what his name was. He said, My name is Izuku Midoriya, but I might not be here when you come. There's a letter at, as he gave the exact location that would explain what happened, what's been happening, and the location of a group of criminals. Midoriya would disappear. Heading towards was well, they were in a city to a nearby rooftop where he'd hide. As Midoriya waited there, eventually he'd see All Might and the Pro Heroes arrive. They'd see the burning van with what seems to be six dead bodies in there, and what seems to be the remnants of an arrow. All Might would recognize what, what was the clothing of these people, what the burnt clothing of these people as that of the circus that they sometimes protect, that he had protected that one time. He asked Ukachi if he knew the exact location of where this was, and when All Might was given it, it was a building not next to it, and on that building's door was a note. Well, on that built the wall, so that it was embedded with an arrow. It was just a, one of Izuku's normal arrows. It explained what was going on with the circus and what it truly was. It was a place that um that killed orphans' parents. He had learned they did kill his mother, who killed those who had weak parents who had weak quirks or were quirkless, before adopting them weeks later and leaving the town, leaving the city where they are. After they were well, obviously before they were robbed banks, and they raised those children to help in their Saying that the people in the van were the leaders and the rest of the people in the circus were at, well, the lake. He would give a location, waiting for them. As he's told All Might that he would appear one day soon. Saying that he planned to become a hero and this is why he did this. And he told All Might that he'd take any punishment that All Might had to deal out to him for what he did to them. But only when that time comes. All Might will begin looking around and asking Shikachi to expand the search parameter. As he had given his name, All Might would ask Shikachi to look for an image of Izuku Midoriya through the police database. And when they do, do so, they'd see what was not in team Izuku Midoriya, but more like Izuku when he was around like five or six. He had green hair with freckles. Anyways, Midoriya would leave the scene and 
heading to a nearby um, convenience store. As in the duffel bag, he had at least a quarter million dollars in his in this duffel bag, along with these with some um <clears throat> with his clothes, well, with his personal belongings, along with the special cell phone that he had hidden, which was given him to him by the by the police for um after his mother's death, so he could contact them to get access to the storage unit. And well, for a month or so, Midoriya would go off of the grid. He'd eventually travel to America, where while there he'd be cornered, especially after, you know, the people of Japan were put on notice for Midoriya. But not really for, like, heroes, especially Midoriya, because according to the, um, according to the records that the, um, circus had, there was around a quarter of a million dollars missing, which means Midoriya has access to money and could leave the States. Well, could leave the United States, Japan. And so many pro heroes around the world was given this information. But a certain organization um, had got this information also. And a man smiled. The kid had just been spotted entering America. And, well, he had his men, um, he had his men surrounded. When Izuku boarded off the plane, he'd grab what was essentially the special arrows and the bow. As he'd walk with his duffel bag, he'd walk out, heading towards America, and walking into America for a while. He was only 13. As he looked around, he was, he'd eventually uh, be get lost, ending in what seems to be a barren part of the city that he was at. When he, was, when he heard clicking, Izuku Midoriya, put your hands up. Midoriya would drop the duffel bag, seeing and along with the case that that housed his arrows and his bow. He placed them down before placing his hands up. As the person would go to cuff him, he just he, with a quick maneuver he dislocates the man's shoulder before throwing him over his own. As the man would fall to the ground, another he would then be hit with a taser as Midoriya seizes up. He begins shaking as he drops to the ground. As he falls unconscious. From the force and uh, from the force of which his head hit the ground along with being taser. So, when he waking up, he realized that he was in a room tied to a chair. He tried to get up, but he couldn't. Midoriya asked where he was, and this is then when a, um, what seems to be a bald man, this is obviously Nick Fury, if you haven't noticed, it's his shield that he's been taking, that's taken Midoriya. Midoriya would ask, who is he? Where's my stuff? And he says, oh, you mean the things that you stole? I think the only thing that's actually yours is that. What is it? Those clothing? And it's still none of that. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, but you did, Jimmy. We did, Midoriya. You see, we have information from Japan. They're currently looking for you. They're not looking to put you in jail, but they are looking for you for answers. And we have you here. There is a war now for your arrest, but... Still. I'm here to offer you a position here. Training. I don't want training. I'm here to America to get at least away from Japan. To die down for a bit so I could train here and go back to be a hero. Now let me go. Midori. Midori would look at him. That's for you say a hero, you say. Well, I'd say what you've done was very heroic, but the people of Japan would never agree with that. You'll most definitely be facing punishment once you return. I knew that. That's so why I took that risk. Why I left. Maybe it won't be as bad when I return. As the man was sigh, he'd introduce himself as Nick Fury, saying that he was here to offer Midoriya a position in S.H.I.E.L.D. He said maybe he'd take it later on down the line. He tell Midoriya about, um, in telling Midoriya for now, telling Midoriya that he'd untie if Midoriya agreed to training and to join S.H.I.E.L.D. when he was needed. Saying that his career as a hero in Japan may not be long after they found out his connections. Midoriya would saw he'd agreed and Fury would untie him. And a couple of days later he'd be put through intensive training. Well for 
around a year, which actually I should have said that the entrance exams were like a was well, two years, so about a year and six months from now, Idoria would um have trained extensively and has special his quiver a special outfit and having gone on many missions with Shield. It was only time for him to return to um to Japan. Having dyed his hair blonde, he was now un he was now washing the dye out. He was now um <clears throat> he had grown his hair out so the blonde was you no know, really long, so he had finally decided to cut it cut it low to back what it used to be. As he walked out of the room, he'd grab his bag along with his special arrows. As he placed it within his suitcase, he grabbed his suitcase in the bag and before walking out, where he'd be met by what was his um partner, but well, as both of his partners, Phil Coulson and Natasha Romanoff. Natasha would say something about how she was sad to see him go. As he looked at her, he smirked. He thanked her. Before looking at Colson, before shaking his hand. And then Colson, if he needed him for another mission, he'd gladly go on it. But he's not joining Shield officially. He's going back to the he's going back to Japan to try to become a hero. Colson or not, as he says, I'll be taking a Quinjet and keeping it for a bit. Colson said that it had already been cleared. Midori would walk out, being met by Fury, who walked alongside him, saying that it was sad to see him go. And that his record was impeccable. Therefore, he said, but I know to let you follow your dreams. But I know it leads you right back here. So until we meet again, Midoriya. As Freya would walk away, Midoriya would get inside the Quinjet before, or I, th I think that's what it's called. But yeah, the Quinjet before he, he flies his way towards America. Once landing, I mean towards Japan, once landing in Japan. But at like a special shield operator base. Stash the Quinjet there before making his way, and then be there that he'd buy an apartment with what money he had. Well, what he barely actually spent any of the money he had taken with him, so he still had relatively close to a quarter of a million dollars, along with extra money he made from working with Shield for the couple of for the like year that he was there. So he found a house, and well, to say the least, the moment his name had been brought up on the um in the system once more. The police had been, well, had been alerted. Though Midori wouldn't be able to move there for months, so they didn't know where he'd go. He having only, mostly, actually having only cash with him. Midoriya, they were, it was quite hard to track. It'd be one day while Midoriya was the, uh, was walking around the city, that he'd come, ac he'd come across an underpass, or under a bridge, where a manhole cover would be blown off. He turned around, wondering what was happening. He immediately put down his um. <clears throat> he didn't immediately put down um the briefcase before pressing pressing a handle inside, which will bring out his bow quickly, along with um a, an arrow, with, with bow with a bunch of arrows, well with a bunch of arrows sticking out. Midori would draw both the um would draw the um bow. As he pointed at the manhole cover where a sludge would come out. Midoriya wondered what the sludge was doing. As the sludge was coming about him being in the city. Saying that he didn't know that man was there and why he was following him. He didn't know the man was here and now he was following him. Midoriya wondered who he was talking about. When he came and when the sludge really noticed him, he said, Ah, a good meat suit. I think I'd use you. He grab try to grab Midoriya, only for Midoriya to put the bow that he the arrow he had down and grab another, quickly draw again and shooting it. This legend would comment about how the arrow would just simply not affect him, letting get hit him. I mean, as to him, this arrow was an electrified arrow, and since the sludge villain is made of mostly liquids, it doesn't end well for the sludge villain. The sludge villain would seize up as the constant voltage of electricity would pass through him. He'd go, he black out. When <clears throat> he and went up going unconscious, Midori would sit there as he began gathering. Um, he finds a nearby bottle floating in the um in the waterway by the river. He put the entire of the sludge villain there, waiting for whoever was following him to come. But to his surprise, the person who had come was the number one hero, All Might. 
he was surprised as he all might ask the young man if he had seen where the sludge or if a sludge villain had come by. The Doyle would hold up a bottle, saying that he was right here. All might would thank him, but before he could leave, the Doyle would ask him a couple. But it had to take a while and All Might would end up revealing his hero form. His true form, not his hero form. Midori would be surprised, but his SEAL training would help him disguise that surprise. As he said, I'm guessing this is your true identity, All Might. All Might would not at the kid. Then yes, saying his name was Toshino Yagi. He knows why he looks like that. As I might say that thanks to an injury I had five years ago. <clears throat> I can only do hero work for around three hours. As he showed Midoriya his injury. Midoriya would say something. I would ask if it was the battle with Toxic Chainsaw. Which I think is what it was. All Might would say no. Someone much worse. As Midori, All Might was about to leave. Midoriya would ask him another question. Could he. Um, could someone without a quirk become a hero? All Might. Retired before it's telling me, Doria, I'm sorry, but no. It would require it would require extensive training for someone to go through their entire life. And for them to become at least adept and the usage of a weapon. But honestly, I don't think quirkless people are cut out for it. Even those with weak quirks, I could say, may not even be cut out for hero work. And it's just because they don't have the power to keep up with what, what most heroes keep up with. But you can do a lot of good as a, as a police officer or firefighter. Midoriya was shy. Before thanking All Might, his, um, he walked away. All Might saw him grab something from the ground. It was a specialized arrow. He wondered why it looked so familiar. As he watched Midoriya um, open the briefcase, which revealed a bow and arrow, um, a bunch of a quiver, and with a bunch of arrows along with the bow, well, uh, well, along with what seems to be an area for a bow to go, he didn't realize Midoriya. This person was now holding a bow as he placed it within. He locked up the briefcase before grabbing a duffel bag and walking away. It wouldn't be until All Might had left. Then um, he um, jumped the head, entered his hero form once more. He jumped away after losing it mid flight before transforming into it again. And it would be then that All Might had noticed the sludge villain was no longer there. It would be then that he'd be, uh, he'd hear explosions off in the distance. Anyways, so Midoriya. Um, so let's cut to Midoriya. Midoriya would be walking around once more, contemplating what All Might had done. Thinking, but he could consider himself a hero. He had been working with Shield, which consisted of America's most of America's quirkless population. Nick Fury himself was quirkless. He thought he he did some good for the world as a Shield agent. So maybe all um, all might could have been wrong. He fought quirkless people with powerful quirks before, but he also began to think because All Might was his hero, someone he aspired to be like. And now this is where I come to a, a cross paths in this what if. Now, honestly, at this point, I'm going to go post a poll on, I'm going to go ask a server on Discord, should I give me Doria one for all or not? I will get back to recording once that is done. All right, so let's get back into the what if. Now, uh, I personally currently have the, um, the, I currently have the server and I'm getting good, like two responses so far. So, I'm gonna stop when I get to the portion of where All Might decides on um where All Might actually after All Might asks me Doria if he wishes to receive one for all, which will be a bit later. So I me mean, Doria would hear an explosion of um would hear an explosion off in the distance. He'd immediately notice there was no one around, and since going into the alleyway, he revealed from the duffel bag was a was a suit. It was his new suit that he had, um, it was, uh, um, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> it was his, um, it was his new shield suit that shield had given him for his, um, while he was a hero. It was actually like a goodbye gift. 
Midoriya would place it on before placing on his glasses. You see the PNG floating around on the screen is what I mean by Midoriya's new suit. You see that, just picture Deku's face. A lot more, like, similar to Hawkeye's face. It's a lot more chiseled and a lot more jacked. I mean, Midoriya is a bit tall for his age at this point. I will have him be tall. So, no. You'll see why I'll do this. Um, if Because it really depends on whether or not later or not I make Midoriya have one for all. So, um, anyways, with Midoriya, he would, once placing on his outfit, he'd immediately hide, hide the, um, he'd immediately hide his things, the money and everything, in a place where only he could reach, which was at the top of a building that no one had access to. He'd even hide the suitcase to the, um, to where his bow and quiver should be. As they were now on his back, he'd immediately climb the building with a grappling hook. As he then began rushing from rooftop to rooftop till he got to the scene where you see that same sludge villain that he had attacked earlier now attacking the pro heroes. He would continue to watch hoping that they would do something but when they didn't he jumped down in front of them. They were surprised but Midoriya drew his bow once more. The sludge villain would tell you oh, it's you again Midoriya. He would say but ah, 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 you can't do that otherwise you risk hurting this kid. Everyone will watch me, do you? Um, the this um, I would um, would would bring his bow back to normal before placing the arrow back in the quiver. He then pressed a certain button on his arrow. As he smirked, as he said, "You're right. I can't do that, but I can do this." As he drew the arrow that he needed, he shot at it. As from what ooze from it was some sort of foam that hardened around that of the sludge villain. He didn't use it to blow it, um, sitting, um, he then jumped over the sludge villain, hitting a backside where, Baku, where this kid wouldn't be harmed. He draw his bow back and hit him with an explosion, a low level explosion arrow, which would blow it to pieces. Bakugo would be flung away, but would be safe, relatively, with a few cuts and scrapes. Everyone would be surprised, ask, wondering if this was a new hero. The pros would immediately go to check on Bakugo. But I mean, um, to Midoriya, someone had been watching him. It was a man and a skinny man. The pros would come and poach Midoriya. As Midoriya, um, <clears throat> as Midoriya was, um, uh, placing his quiver, um, his, um, not his quiver, his, was like, put his bow down. He, he sort of transformed it into like a staff-like thing. Like a staff-like weapon. As the pros asked him who was he, was he a hero? He would snap, shake his head as they said they'd have to arrest him. Only for Midori able to say, sorry, but that's not really going to happen. See Midori reach for something, they tell everyone to get down. Only for Midori to throw down what seemed to be a smoke bomb. He then disappeared from, well, what is the area? Only to appear rooftops away. He actually fired a grapp ran away and fired a grappling clip to get onto the roof. Where he continued to hide. As she smirk, he'd be ready to turn around and run, only for him to run into what seems to be a wall. He hold his nose and damn it. Oh, why didn't I notice that wall there? When he looked up, he saw what was a tall, muscular man. It was All Might. All Might would grab Midoriya before asking what was he doing here? Was he a vigilante? Midoriya wouldn't say not a vigilante. Knowing that he still somewhat had his credentials to shield as he had only been here a couple weeks. He had at least a month before his credentials to shield were cut loose. He said he was a former shield, he's a shield operator. As he held it up, all men had heard of this organization who protected the world globally. He asked the kid what was he doing in Japan, saying that he was here to become a pro hero. Saying that he was trained by shield and became an operative only for a bit as, you know, to pay them for helping train him. All Might would ask why did he interfere as Midoriya says that he saw the explosion and knew people would need help. Even if he had to put his body on the line, he would make sure he'd save everyone there. And well, he did. He saved the only person really that was in danger, which was that kid. Even the pro, he said, I sat there and watched as the pro heroes did nothing. And I couldn't just sit there. So my legs moved without me even thinking. And I fired. And I um, came up with a plan. I knew the Sludge Journal would say something about me not being able to hurt him because he had the child as a hostage. Had the boy as a hostage. And that's why I put my own plan into action. So 
thing, but the heroes wouldn't understand. Mostly, they, they get low level heroes and don't have access to organi- to knowledge of organizations such as that of. Uh, to that of shield, so they wouldn't believe me anyway. All my guess, he said. I guess I understand. As all my continues to look at me, Doria, he tell me, Doria, that you impress me, young child. What is your name? Izuku Midoriya. All my eyes will widen, having not heard that name in over a year. He decided to he'd give more information a bit later. Midori had noticed the tensing in All Might's muscles and was ready to make a run for it before All Might began speaking to him once more. He told Midori that he was offering, offering him an opportunity to gain a quirk. Midori would say that's a lot to think about. But he said he knew that quirk... Actually, he looked at All Might crazy after realizing what he had just said. Saying what? Giving a quirk is impossible. And All Might would tell him what about his quirk, one for all, saying that he would like Midoriya to be the next bearer. Midoriya would say he need time for this. All Might would say, "You, well, you, I agree that you will need time. The entrance exam is around, let's say, a year from now. Let's say I train you for now for a year. You have to the end of that year to decide whether or not you." Want to accept one for all. Midoriya would nod. As he looked at All Might. She said very well then. As All Might asked him if he need, if he had a place to stay. Midoriya said his. The um, place he had purchased wouldn't be ready for him. For another, for a couple. For two months from now. All Might would say that he'd be welcome to stay with him. Saying that he did have some questions of his own. As Midoriya would sigh. All Might would say I guess you already know what they're about. As Midoriya nods, they head towards All Might's place, where he actually calls Shikachi. Shikachi and Midori, um, and All Might sit Midoriya down before asking him questions. Asking him why did he flee the country. It says because I knew it ruined my chances of becoming a hero. As All Might asks, how long was he a part of their criminal organization? He says I've been a part of it since I was, well, a little bit after my birthday. Um, after uh, I was four. And then I joined... And then they officially started making me join them on jobs since I was six. But I had nowhere to go all night. Essentially, there were circus and who were employees of people with weaker quirks and quirkless people. People who were attacked constantly. They could simply call a pro hero and say that I was kidnapped by a villain. And if I were to refuse to go back and say that they were criminals, they could simply say that the villain has somehow messed with my mind. All Might and Sukachi knew that this kid is potential could this could potentially happen. Midoriya says, but I had enough. One day they asked me to kill a bunch of people that fired at that lab. That explosion at that lab. Yeah, but that explosion, it hit an area where really where no one was really hurt. But Midoriya said, I know. I made it that way. I didn't hit where they want me to hit, but I hit it in a place where I knew no one would be severely uh, damaged from it. Nor would the building be that much damage. It could be put out within, well, it, it would take a while. So you'd have at least an hour or two to arrive before the building until a bit after that, then the building would be in severe integrity, severe, and their technologies would be in severe, dam- um, severe danger. All mine would say, well, they shut down that division a couple of months after. The scientists had apparently quit, and no one else wanted to join after learning of the attack on the lab. As Midori would sigh, saying that he apologized for that. Shikashi would tell Midori that he's going to place him on a probation, on probation with house arrest, saying that All Might will be his overseer for now, saying that he has until the UA entries exam, saying that he'll be training with All Might. He knows this is saying, but he'll also be doing a community service with All Might for the next year. Midori would agree, as he thought, well, he knew Sukachi, it was his rightful punishment. Well, it was what he assumed would be his rightful punishment. He thought he deserved at most jail time. Sukachi would look at the kid. Before asking what was his dream, he said, my dream is to be a hero, like All Might. As he looked at him, saying that All Might was the reason why I wanted to continue to be a hero. 
But I'm like, also the reason why my mother's dead. I remember looking at Midori asking, what did he mean? As Midori would say that after I was diagnosed quirkless, that video of your, of you when you first made your debut was what all that kept my dream going. So much that even though after hearing everyone make fun of me and call me names and the doctor's words over and over again, my mother decided to take me to a circus. As you, if as I explained in a letter, that eventually led to her death. Had I given up, had I never watched that video over and over again, I, she would have not died. Well, I don't blame All Might for it. All Might is the reason why my mother died. Because I continued to believe that I could be someone like All Might. When I should decide, should have decided to be someone like myself. To maybe give up on my dreams. All Might would look at me, Doria, before telling him it was never a right to give up on one's dream. This person now look at him. He was still quirkless and yet worked hard to acquire and got a, a job where he worked with taking out people with quirks all the time. He told me, Doria, that he was most of the way there with acquiring to his dream. To not give up now. As me, Doria, would agree with All Might. He said he won't now. Then that he got over this a bit now. Ashikachi would leave. The next day, Midoriya would get an ankle monitor. And, well, <clears throat> his training with All Might would begin. They work at the Goba Beach, where, um, the Goba Municipal Beach, where uh, uh, Midoriya would be focused, uh, would be having to uh, clean up the entirety of the beach, the beach rather than just, rather than just the one single area. And while there, he do intense physical exercises with um, equipment that All Might had given him. It was apparently equipment used by those who had super strength. But Midoriya's training actually allowed him to eventually gain, like, I wouldn't say, like, low levels of super strength. He can lift more, a lot more than the average person or even some of the strongest people in the world. Like, like strong, like, people who don't have enhancement quirks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, of all world. So he can lift a lot more. And his physical capabilities grew to a whole new level. He was extremely fast. Because, I mean, look at it. Shigaraki was extremely... Had some impressive speed beats of someone who doesn't have a quirk that increases their speed. So, I was like, yo, why not, you know, give me Dory this? And someone in Discord gave me an idea to make... To just amp up his baseline human, ab human abilities. Like his strength, speed, and durability, and endurance, and stamina, all those things. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So by the time of Midoriya's year of training, he had finally cleaned off the beach and was now being released from that of, um, I think it's house arrest. Is what it's, yeah, it's called house arrest. He smiled as I remember tell him that now it's time for his decision to come. All right, YouTube. So I've come to the decision on what to do with um, One For All. And I've decided to not give it to Midoriya. Oh, I could say not now. I mean, I'm actually, I'm not going to give it to Midoriya. I rather all might decide to use it as the last, um, to become the last user of One for All. Hopefully, passing on the torch that not is One for All itself, but um, <clears throat> but is the duty as a symbol of peace. He wants to pass that on to Midoriya. Who better than a kid who was similar to him, who was quirkless and yet was willing to put in the work to show that anyone could become a hero to usher in a new era of peace. He saw Midoriya at the forefront of that and decided that it was probably best to let One For All die with him. Well, to like go away with him. Or he might, if Midoriya so wished for him to do, he could pass it on to someone else. So... Midoriya would head off towards the school. Now, you may ask, yo, what about Midoriya's hero costume? Um, we don't really have much information about what he, what he, what is he going to wear? Well, um, I was recently, um, uh, I was, what was I on? I don't think, I think it was Pinterest. Pinterest. I'm not sure how to pronounce that shit. Pinterest, and I found the, or, no, I think this was Google. I found it on Google, if I'm not mistaken. And I found these Hawkeye images. And, well, the one that you should be seeing, there should be, like, two two or three images going around. You see the one with the purple sleeve is what his costume looked like when he was working in a circus. It's what they had him wear. 
<clears throat> but now you see the one that um we cut out that actually uh, since they both cut out. Not the one with the Ant Man photo. Not the one with the Ant Man um like T V thing on there on the arrow, but the other one. That is what Midori's current hero costume will look like. What he's wearing currently is the one that I just shown you and the first the first the first image. Which should they should circulate between each other. So if you have if you've seen the three images, then you know what I'm speaking of. So Midori would brandish this um brandish this under his clothing. Since he wasn't a part of a schooling system, he actually was placed at the very back. Shield had caught him up. On what pretty much what he was what he needed, and to say the least, Midoriya was it's not that actually Midoriya was technically homeschooled while, um, was orphaned. He was still homeschooled, so he's pl plenty smart. It was like this is not like him being Hawkeye's reincarnation. This is him having the origin story similar to Hawkeye and making Hawkeye's abilities his own. So, but Midoriya is still can be relatively smart whether he goes to school. or so I still haven't relative past the um written portion, the first portion of the exam. It'd be then that President Mike would go to the explanation of the point system and the robots to go. When a kid um in glasses would point out about the fourth robot, President Mike would reveal that the robot awarded no points to anyone. So they should really just avoid it. Everyone would go to their um testing sites where Midori would realize he had testing sites. He'd be happy to um to start at least. So what he'd do is this. Once there, he began stretching. He then draw his bow back a couple of times to get his arm used to it with both arms actually, because I'm going to make Midoya ambidextrous so that in case one arm is destroyed, like to where he can't actually like draw it back, which he will primarily use his right hand. But since he can, if he can't draw it back with his right hand, he can at least hold it out while he draws it back with his left hand. And can hold it steadily at least. <clears throat> Even with severe with broken arms, he's learned to be able to do this. And he also has some other tech with him that can allow him to create um that allows crossbows with him. So as we doors get prepared, present the doors begin to open, and immediately due to his shield training, he knows to rush in there immediately. There really is no countdown to battle, just how long you can go without being caught by the enemy being forced into it. He'd immediately rush in and fast paces around surprising the people. Now I say he's superhuman compared to normal humans, but he's like a low level superhuman. So I say he moves closer to speeds of around 20 to 30 miles an hour at his, at, no I say at like mid range, maybe 40 closing in at top speed, like the 40s, like mid 40s is his top speed. So around 45, 46, so 44, 46 miles per hour, somewhere in that range. So once Vidoria would um, enter, he'd immediately grab his bow. But his bow, he would then um, configure his bow as it would turn into a staff as he began twirling it in his hands. As a two-pointer would spot him and begin attacking, only for Midoriya to knock its head clean off with a single swing of his um. His bow staff, which is literally what it is, it's a bow and a staff in the same form, so technically it's a bow staff. Doi would then begin taking on other robots before the other contestants would join. Realizing he no longer had the advantage of hand to hand combat and people with quirks, he would find a high point and would begin just hitting robots with as many of his arrows as possible. And none of these were his explosion arrows, these are actually just relatively normal arrows. He didn't want. He wanted to save the tech because the company that Shield was working with was const, was um, mass producing his arrows for him to be able to use them properly. So yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, as Midoriya would finish, um, he realized counting as many robots as he could. He realized he amassed a total of 70 points just from this purge. He would decide to go to the top building to see how everyone else was doing and help them out if needed. Using a bow to take off an arm that was attacking other students from a mile away, easily over a mile away. Even while the robots were moving, he could still hit his target precisely every time. And that's exactly what he did. So by the time, well, it, um, 
By the time President Mike would give them the two-minute warning, he would feel rumbling. Noticing the building he was on was actually quite tall compared to the rest, he realized it was now splitting open. And under the building was coming out, well, from where it opened at, from the really directly in the middle, was the Zero Pointer itself. Once making himself known, Midoriya would, uh, um, he couldn't, he doesn't have any, well, he does have, like, grenades. So, he, I say he pin, he pulled the pin, keeping the clamp on as possible before tying it with some, um, like, some bandages that would, um, that were loose, but would be hold on enough for him to cause explosions with the grenades as he tied it to the end of his bow and fired it, exploding, um, portions of the zero pointer, key, or, um, using explosions to essentially fling people away from the zero pointer. But he then noticed that there was a pile of rocks under the girl, but his arrow wouldn't reach it fast enough. He sighed. He didn't know what to do. But he decided to become a hero. He knew what he had to do. He chose this path, so he decided to put his own self in the line. Firing a grappling hook arrow, which will land next to the girl, he immediately grappled down towards her. Well, not next to her, um, like um, 30 feet after behind her. He grappled down. He um, essentially slid down on the grappling hook with his bow as he grabbed the girl along the way. Well, the, um, he wouldn't be able to stop along the way as he dropped down. He noticed the girl wouldn't be able to... Um, he, he wasn't able to move her leg. He told her, if, asked what was her quirk, trying, as they only had um, at least a couple seconds left. She immediately replied, zero gravity. She asked her to use it on the rocks. As the real rock would do so, Midori would grab her, jumping up out of the zero pointer's reach, as he would then um, grab a hold of his bow and sliding them the rest of the way away. Once there, he would grab an arrow. Now, you may ask, didn't you say he only had no more arrows? He does. This is one of his normal arrows. It's just actually literally like a, a like a high, um, a strong rope tied to the end of an actual, um, of an arrow, to the end of an arrow for him to literally zip line across. He would then sigh as he needed to find a place to hit, but he found a crevice where he, he could see the, rep, the power button of the zero pointer. As it was still going to attack them, he drew his bow. He closed his eyes before opening him as he aimed and took fire. It whizzed through the sky until it hit the red button as it was about to touch. The zero pointer was about to touch him. I mean, that's to me, he put so much force behind that draw that it shot clean through the, um, through the button, destroying it, cutting the zero pointer off. But it also, not only did it do that, it also hit the power bank and caught, and the spark from it caused it to explode, destroying the zero pointer. As he used his body to protect the young, the brown-haired girl, when the explosion was over, he looked around. He asked her if she was okay. She said that her leg was hurt. He placed his bow, um, converting it into a staff. He placed it on his back with the attachment from his quiver. As he then pick her up and carry her away from the debris, <clears throat> they eventually make it towards where everyone else had crowded up at after running from the zero pointer. Everyone was surprised that this kid had just essentially beaten the zero pointer with a simple bow and arrow. But they think, well, not really. They think that the bow and arrow must be a part of his quirk, that he must have a quirk that allows him to see great distances. Or he must have a marksman like quirk. Like, I think uh, Snipe has a quirk similar to that. It's, I don't think it's marksman exactly. So I'm not sure. But he must have a marksman like quirk or something. That makes him essentially perfect when it comes to aiming at things. Many people begin to speculate what exactly, if that's his quirk or if it's a variation of that. As Ridoya continues, he eventually makes it towards the robots who are coming in with a gurney. As he placed Uraraka there, a recovery girl would come. She'd ask the boy if he was okay, as he not, as he relatively sustained no injuries compared to, well, um, Ken and Deku. So he'd be actually alright. As Midori would ask if she was okay, recovery girl would say she'd be fine. As Midori would not, he would tell the young girl to make sure she goes easy on um she goes easy on doing if she does any training to go easy on it for a couple of days while her body heals. Before he would walk away, recovery girl would ask for his name. As he say my name was Izuku Midoriya. As he walked away. As he continued as he left the way. 
Now, from here, we cut to the teachers in the observation room. They were all shocked to see a kid do that. As he had power loader, how did he cause the robot to explode from where the trajectory from what um, the um, video surveillance showed us is that all he did was shoot towards what was the off switch on the zero pointer. It was like he shot with the arrow was propelled with such force that it essentially literally went through the button breaking it and hit the power brink in the spar in the spar and the spark from that arrow hitting the metal of the power bank caused the um the fluids within to explode, destroying the zero pointer. There were all surprises as I would ask what was his quirk. Everyone would wonder this one especially Snipe thinking that he could have found himself a little prodigy. A prodigy or a protege. Protege is what I'm saying, but a prodigy also. He could have found himself a prodigy uh damn, a protege and a, or a psychic, whatever you want to call it. Call it. It would then be revealed to everyone that that kid was quirkless. All Might would laugh. As Nezu asked if he knew anything about this, as All Might would not. Saying that Midoriya, as he asked, as he asked the teachers, they remembered the case. And he, they remembered about the circus that was busted for the illegal, um, for robbing the cities they've been to. How they were doing this for what, what seems to be a long time as they trained many kids and generations of them. So I say around like 100 to 70, 70 to 100 years. Of doing this. They remember nodding as he said that that kid was the one who turned them in, saying that he was a part of the circus trying to be a villain, yet he chose to be a hero. Even though he took the lives of the people in that van, that boy did the right thing. And it was only the way for him to, apparently, according to Midoriya's story, it's the only way for him to escape. Saying that he went to the States for a bit where he received a bit more training before coming back. It's a young Midori is quite the impressive kid. And with his, as you see, his strength and speed uh, is pretty much pretty stacked for a quirkless kid. This is what humans by alone are capable of. Imagine what Midori would be capable of if he ever had a quirk. Even with it being like a useless, like, um, oh, like a marksman quirk. He would be deadly, but Midoriya is already deadly as he trained himself to have essentially what is you could call an artificial quirk of his own creation. Through his own pure skill, he's become someone like, he's become someone that the world would never forget. He will become someone that the world would never forget. The teachers were surprised as I always say, I, hmm, I want the kid on my team, in my class. Well, I would say, why? As me, he said, look, Midoriya must definitely place number one in the exams. But he doesn't have a quirk like the re like the rest of your students more than like um like um some other kids that can go out of control. Yeah, but Midoriya fights quirkless, as do do I. I think I'd be able to teach Midoriya a lot better than you, Vlad King, and that's why. Vlad was grunt, knowing that that was actually true. As we, um, as Aizawa would begin talking, um, he would ask Nezu for permission, and Nezu would grant it, saying that he hope he can't wait to see what young Midori is capable of doing, saying that he's most definitely going to pass his kid either way. And he would be surprised as we time skip to about two to three weeks later. Midoriya would get a notification about his mail being delivered with the um as he looked through the app he noticed that there was a letter from Yue in the mail. He'd immediately rush to his mailbox, grab and get it, and open it and once he was back in his house. He'd be extremely happy, yelling out how he had gotten in. All Might had apparently told him that he scored the most points of the exam. I believe Bakugo scored a little less than like I think it was around sixty eight. So like the late um the upper sixties but not only with those lower seventies, he got a total score of sixty five with the hero um with the rescue points. Especially because he was help well, actually a lot more because he was helping students. So I say around the same around seventy rescue points for him helping other students when they were in danger from the other robots. All my would welcome him to the um to QA as me Dory would be happy. This is then when he'd get a knock at his door. When he opened it, he'd see both Natasha and Colson, along with Fury there. He'd ask what they were here for, as they say that they were here to celebrate. As Midoriya narrowed his eyes at them, he asked if they knew about this. Did they pull any strings? They say no. 
saying that they already knew about him getting in. Yes, that's true, but they didn't pull any strings to help him. Fury says that he knows that Midoriya would never accept the um would never accept the invitation to probably go somewhere else before. Um uh, if he learned that if he did that. So he said he decided not to, saying that UA is one of the best schools out there. And to have a future Asian like him trained at UA would be one of the best things possible. Natasha was actually a lot older. She was, Natasha was in her um early twenties, so she couldn't be in high school, which is even though she would congratulate the kid. As the Midori would hear a bunch of trucks outside, he see Adams, what is that noise? <clears throat> Fury would say that we're having some supplies moved into your house. We can, you never know when you'll be in danger. And plus, you should gather all of these things to have them ready to move to UA with you. As Fury threw <clears throat> two sets of keys at Midori, he says one is for, well, it's a pretty expensive car. I hope you use it well, and the other is, well, truck of sorts that should help you um, transport these things and get to school every day. Midoriya will be shocked and he's not even old to drive in the States and he doesn't even have a license. He says you're a SHIELD agent and you've driven many, uh, um, many of SHIELD's Humvees and vehicles and you know how to fly a, pa a, pain, a plane. I see no reason not for, for you to not be able to drive. As he would even flick a card at Midoriya which you would catch. Or two, actually, would show a driver's license. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, a driver's license. A, a government-approved driver's license, more likely, is what I'm going to say. I don't think those actually exist, but yeah, come on. Anyways, we move on from here. After celebrating with Phil and them and getting everything acquainted in his house, a couple, like, I think it was like a month or two would pass, and he'd finally be ready to go to UA. Having started, begin packing his um, equipment, and everything he then grabbed the last thing which was the mannequin and which was the case that casing that held his suit he picked it up as it was a bit heavy but he'd be able to handle it quite well as he walked into the back of his truck he would lay it down at the um in the space that he had reserved of it he would then um get into it before driving off to ua midori was sorry saying his first day he hoped just not to how do I say this? It's not too much for him. <clears throat> Once arriving at UA, he noticed how the gates were big. He'd also realized that some of the teachers were waiting for him. He'd ask why they were here, and the teacher says that they already got a notice from Fury and were here to help Midori get his things acquainted. Midori would ask, What did he mean? As they said, Did, did you not receive the letter? As Midoriya asked what letters, they said that all students were supposed to have moved in all last week, but Midoriya never did. But, but you never did. What? He says that this is a campus. This is, um, it's going, you're going to be living on a campus in a dorm room. Huh, I did not know that. Midoriya would say, as, um, they would guide him there when Midoriya would drive, um, would drive up the hill with some of the teachers accompanying him. Well, more or less, I would who want to get to know the kid he could see as his star student. A quirkless kid, being the first quirkless kid to literally get into UA. Because you can't call All Might, because technically, All Might, when he went to UA, had a quirk. So, he's the first quirkless kid. Even though All Might was born quirkless, Midori is the actual first quirkless kid in UA in this story. So... <clears throat> Moving on, Midoriya, but now, um, once they would get everything, um, the teachers would tell him to wait there to the end of the day to get everything settled and move in. Saying that he should also, um, that they'll send a couple of people to his house to gather some clothing and things for him. As he nodded, he didn't think all this stuff was going to fit in his room, but maybe he could pull some strings. He did have a bunch of extra cash laying around, so, oh well. He would, um... He would head to his first class, which would be class 1A. He would actually get there before Aizawa. Once he entered, he'd take off his purple tinted glasses and say, Wow, this is a large ass door. Oh my god. As he would then open it, he would come across yelling. But he would freeze when he saw the person who was yelling. It was, he remembered him. He was obviously, this was Kachan. He was friends with him years ago. And never forgot him, even after he left. 
Bakugo would look at Midoriya, but would recognize that hair in Freckles instantly. As he said, Deku. Everyone would look at the two of them as Midoriya would say, Bakugo, what are you doing here? I got in the UA. What are you doing here? I got in too. Bakugo would glare at Midoriya saying, there's no way they let someone like you in. As Midoriya was smirk saying, well, I guess you're wrong, Bakugo. As he looked at Bakugo, Bakugo would be a bit angered and peeved at Midoriya. You know, he would say, oh, well, then. As he walked past Bakugo, Bakugo would tell him to get back here. Deku, as he called him, saying that you're still useless. There's no way they let a useless person like you into UA. Many of the students would get in Bakugo's way, telling him he needs to calm down. There's no need for him to, to call another student that. Bakugo was, was scoffed before saying that it'll be revealed eventually anyway. He doesn't care. He does wonder how did Midoriya get in though. Eventually, um, Midoriya would be approached at his desk by both Ida and Uraraka, who would introduce herself, thanking Midoriya after thanking Midoriya for saving her. And Ida would tell Midoriya he was such a um, he must have known about the truth behind the test from the start. Midoriya would shake his would shake his head, saying he actually did it, but he's glad that he did what he did anyway. He would have done it had there been rescue points or not. As he looked at Ida, he didn't look away before saying, by the way, our teacher's here. As everyone wondered what he's speaking of, as no one saw anyone come through the door. But as I actually had us as I was snuck in and had sat down and had laid down inside of his um what is it, sleeping bag. Midoya would then <clears throat> everyone would then watch Midoya produce what seems to be some sort of marble before flicking it with his thumb. Everyone would hear ow, ow. Damn it. As everyone sees someone get up from what seems to be, is this a caterpillar, actually? And ask, as it would be revealed that it was just a man in a sleeping bag. As he asked who did that, everyone would look at Midoriya. As Midoriya would say, oh, come on, guys. You didn't have to sing me out like that. Oof. As I would glare at Midoriya, he sighed before telling them that they took too long to get quiet. And he didn't, that they were so loud that he, he was able to come open the door and sneak in. Before he looked at Midoriya and Bakugo, he would shake his head before telling them to put their gym uniforms on. Before telling Midoriya that um to go grab that those items of his, Midoriya's eyes were widened as he nods. Aizawa would give it, um everyone would go claim their um gym uniforms as I as Midoriya <clears throat> would put his gloves on before grabbing his bow and quiver with his arrows in. You know, these were his special arrows, so yeah. <clears throat> He'd grab them and would take um would head out towards the field where everyone would be waiting. They wonder why he had a bow and arrow. And Zawa would then ask, say Midoriya. As Midoriya would ask, he said that um would look at him. He said that you scored the highest you had the highest score on the entrance exam, both practical and the written portion. How far was your softball throw and uh High school. I mean, middle school. Junior high. Whatever. Dory says, I ever, actually never went to junior high. I was homeschooled. Um, and we never did this. Okay. We did physical exercises, but not this. As I was sad uh, before saying, I guess this is your first time then. As he told me, Dory, to throw this as far as he can. You can do anything as long as you stay in the circle. Dory were not. T touching the button on his bow, he knew exactly what arrow would be required. As he um, grabbed one, um, a pouch of his, he'd bring out a fixture, which was a piece of tape, which he tied the ball to. And with it, everyone will wonder why Midori was drawing a bow with the ball on, uh, on the tip of the ball, like arrow tip. As Midori let it go, everyone saw it fly. As I always showed the distance, it, it easily went over. Huh, that's interesting. Um, so Midoriya, it would show as Midoriya, um, be, everyone would notice that the arrow was seemingly slowing down, the numbers were slowing down, which means the arrow was slowing down. Everyone would look at Midoriya as he would, as everyone see him smirking before he pressed the button as they saw the numbers catapult even further. And they then heard an explosion. 
everyone began looking around, seeing the area where it came from. As they looked at Midoriya all wide-eyed, as the ball finally dropped. He got a total of 2,574 2, meters, which is approximately 1.6 miles or feet, 8,448 8, feet. And you may say, what if, where am I getting this math from? Hawkeye is able to shoot a target while being well, a stationary target from approximately for about a, from a, over a mile. But with that bow, it gave that a little extra boost. I mean, actually, I wouldn't say, i say, like, yeah, it gave it a little a boost that would get it to that 0.6. It was like around 0.4 to 0.5 something. Um, That 1.4, 1.5 area when he finished, when the bow was about to die down before shutting it off into a 0.6. Everyone would look at Midoriya as they were all surprised. Even Bakugo was surprised, as I believe Midoriya and Cannon averaged around 700. I think he averaged like 750, which is 0.466 miles. Which you take that to feet, that's. So around wow, seven hundred and fifty, um, seven hundred and fifty meters, which I actually put seven sixty. So let me correct that right quick. Seven hundred and fifty meters in feet is approximate is around, is actually two thousand four hundred and sixty feet. So that means Midoriya blew Bakugo's Tesco out of the water. Everyone would see how fun it is when would celebrate. Only for us, I would have crushed their dreams before telling them whoever got last place would be excelled. It would be expelled. He would then add, except for Midoriya. Everyone would ask as Aizawa would look at Midoriya, as Midoriya's side, before Aizawa would drop a bomb on, drop, drop a bomb on him, saying that Midoriya is quirkless and got into UA and also scored the highest. Midoriya has most definitely exceeded my expectations that I refused to, until Midoriya shows me that he no longer has any potential, I refuse to drop him from the course. Midoriya has a lot of potential to grow, and the skill set that he has currently. So Mizori will Midori, Mizori, Midori will be exempt from this test. And see, mostly because well actually Mizori Mid, damn, Midori would be exempt from being dispelled. He would take the test like the rest of you though. So <clears throat> So apparently in the fifty meter uh, run, if Midori was to hit his top speed at which is around forty six miles per um forty six miles per hour is around two seconds literally two seconds at his top speed so with midoriya getting that we then move on to the others which the next one for him would be the 100 meters which goes from two seconds to five seconds with his finishing within that time midoriya is literally placing within the top echelons of this everyone is surprised that he's able to actually do it and let's go, let's add another test, the mile test. It will take Midoriya a minute and 18 seconds. Now, I will say that Ida does not beat out Midoriya due to the fact is that Ida engines can stall and more than likely will stall as Ida cannot run for long distances that much. Especially with his baseline quirk when he uses reciprocal press and gets even, well, actually, I think he, I, I think he should be able to if I'm not mistaken. He should be able to. So I say the only person to be able to outpace Midoriya would be Ida. Momo wouldn't be able to. No one else would be able to outpace Midoriya except for Ida, and his because of his quirk. He placed in the top three. I'm um, in the top uh, five in the um, the long jump, the side to side jump. He placed like top ten, and the um grip test. He'd be able to get in the upper echelons of around six hundred to seven hundred and fifty pounds of force in his peer grip in his grip alone due to his extensive strength training. <clears throat> so I say very and flexibility Midoriya aces it as well. He has to be in some pretty uncomfortable to take some he's in been in uncomfortable positions to take pretty really good shots. So I say his flexibility is one of the best. So right now Midoriya is coming out on top 
everyone is surprised to hear that the Quirkless Kid still placed number one in all these tests overall. As they were outdone by him, many were a bit jealous that Midoriya was so gifted, thinking that he must have gone through. I must, I mean, Dory must have gone through extensive training to get this far, but how extensive could it have been? They look at the 6'3 kid. Yes, Midoriya will be 6'3 at this time. I, I like, I truly like Midoriya being a bit taller than he is in canon because, let's be honest, would you really be afraid of a 5 foot? How, how tall is Midoriya? Is five foot five. Would you really be afraid of somebody who could um an archer that's that high? I probably would. Not gonna lie, me myself, I probably would. I know I ain't dodging that shit, but still, give him a more imposing type of figure. So six over six foot. You know what I'm saying? Since he's down in the quirk area, let's make him up in other areas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Anyways. On after everyone would learn that Deku had placed number one, everyone would look at the bottom to notice the name. It was Minoru Mineta, but it would then be revealed by Aizawa after Mineta had a little panic attack that he was lying about, that he was deceiving them so that they would give their best. Afterwards, everyone would go, um, would leave to go to their dorms where Midoriya would, um, would have, extra, um, would have his boxes in front of his door, not the ones from his truck, but from his house, obviously. And when he would, once there, he would begin decorating his room. He'd find the extra space he needed and would put his suit <clears throat> in the display plate, um, but actually take his suit display with the arrows and the bow that's, well, his current bow and arrows before he, <clears throat> <clears throat> he take them to the locker room, where it fold into his own personal locker. Where he'd have to stock up the arrows after every time he went out or used them. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Anyways, um, once he having everything set up and ready. Midoriya would sleep on his bed in a new dorm, and the next day, he would head to school and would go through normal high school classes until it was time for the heroics class. And who would be the teacher? None other than All Might. Once arriving, he would go on a test and would tell them what they'd be doing, saying that they'll be doing a uh, hero course training, obviously, and would then point at the wall, telling them that it was that the clothes make the pros before opening everyone's cases. Everyone noticed that one of the cases was missing. As everyone looked to see that it was Midoriya's who was missing. It asked where his was. As Midoriya says he just, he brought his own. Um, he said that they all see. Well, especially the boy. As he went, as they all walked to the um, locker room, they watched Midoriya go to what seems to be a, some high-tech locker as he opened it with a finger and an eye scan. A fingerprint, thumb scan, and an eye scan, and a retinal scan. As everyone would watch it open to reveal his hero suit, his hero costume. <clears throat> everyone would watch Midoriya stock up on arrows before he, um, after then he would get dressed and would head out. He'd be one of the last people out, and well, to say the least, everyone was surprised at Midoriya's costume. It was unique and different compared to the rest. Midoriya seemed to have some sort of tactical, like I wouldn't be able to describe all guys. It was like a black, not skin tight, but it was a really tight, it was like a tight suit that really showed Midoriya, where he had like a short sleeve shirt with these weird, um, like I say, you say gloves, but with a, with a bit of braces on them, on both of his hands. On his pockets, on um, on his side of his legs were um, what seems to be um, a pouch with whatever they didn't know, and on his belt was essentially a utility belt with other knickknacks and things like that. More string for him to read, um, to restring his bow and everything else. 
Everyone will say how Midori's um costume is cool, and even said that he even has the glasses from that he wore that he wears on them. Midori said that they're actually part of his hero costume. He wore them because, well, he actually likes how they look. Now, All Might will tell them that they'll be doing battle trials, and <clears throat> I'm saying that it'll be a hero versus villain team exercise. Well, the heroes have to acquire a bomb that the villains have in their possession. Saying that because most villain activity don't take place outside, but inside of, well, in, in like, on, on, in the inside of buildings. As, like, a sort of base of sorts. Telling the hero team that they'll have five minutes to prepare, along with the, well, the villain team and the hero team would have five minutes to prepare before the exam starts, before the test starts. As you tell them, they'll be drawing lots to pick their teams rather than it being them choosing it. Because they never know who they'll be teamed up with in the field. Midoriya knew that that was true because he never knew. Well, to be honest, he knew that he would be teamed up with Natasha a lot, but he it was always it could always it was always something by the else always accompanying them. So he never knew who he was actually just who all was going to be on his team when he was taking certain part of certain missions with Shield. <clears throat> so, anyways, let's move on from here. Everyone would draw their teams, and Midoriya would get a team with Uraraka. Uraraka would uh, say that she was happy that they'll be on the team. Say that she thinks that they'll do good on this test, and then it'll be revealed that their team, that their the villain team, would be that none other than Bakugo and Ida, and they'd be the first ones up, heading off to their building. Uh, Midoriya and them will meet in uh, Uraraka will wait outside as they prepare. Midoriya would tell Uraraka to wait a bit, saying that. He um he tells Uraraka to head straight in, saying that he knows Bakugo's going to look for him, so he should pass right by her. Then that he's going to try to get to a vantage point to help her out as much as possible. She would nod as All Might tells them to start. Midori will shoot off an arrow towards another building, because everyone will watch Midori be pulled to that building. All Might would ask what he was doing, as Midori would say he never said we had to go inside of the building. Everyone will watch Midori draw what seems to be an a bow with a ball, um, with a ball like tip on the um, as an arrow tip, a ball, a circle as an arrow tip. Everyone will watch him as he aims, telling Uraraka to head in now. Uraraka will do so, passing by Bakugo. Midori would eventually find Ida. He knew exactly what to do. Midori would um would grab t um would shoot the arrow. Either here in the glass, break will turn around only for it to be too late as he was wrapped up in what seems to be a net. Everyone was surprised at this. And Midoriya, as Bakugo would hear it, he would meet up, but Midoriya would catch him off guard. As Bakugo, as Midoriya has shot another arrow through a, a zipline arrow for him to grapple into, as Bakugo turned the corner, Midoriya kicked him in the face as he had finally landed. Bakugo would wonder what he was doing before Midoriya would grab what seems to be. An arrow, two specialized arrows that were connected by some string before shooting at them as they would then pin Bakugo to the wall. As Bakugo was about to do something, everyone would watch me doing within draws bow once more before shooting Bakugo's hands with that same foam like gel that All Might had seen Midori use when he came back to Japan against the Sludge Villain. It created that, that weird foam that then hardened up around Bakugo's hands making it essentially hard for Bakugo to move. And since he wasn't sweating, it's he hasn't been collecting enough, you know, um, power for his quirk. He even tried exploding it, but explosions were a bit weaker by it. Due to the properties of this um, foam, it was sort of like combating the explosions a bit. Now, I mean, he exploded it from outside. I say he'd have a bit more um, of a chance. When Midoriya would then wrap around Bakugo's legs was the um, capture tape. All Might would then say the hero team wins. As Uraraka had gotten her hands on the, um, had came into the room to see Ida struggling trying to get out of a net, which seemed to be wrapped around his body. As Midoriya smirked, All Might, um, when they would all return, All Might would ask everyone who was the victor, who was the, um, MVP of this. Everyone would say that it was Midoriya all simultaneously. And All Might would grant knowing that it was true. He said that Midoriya did well, but he should learn to work with his um, partner a lot more. 
Midoriya would look at Rock before um, nodding at her, saying that, communicating that he was sorry that he didn't uh, really work with her that much. He didn't really communicate much of a plan. He just told her what he knew Bakugo would do. However, everyone would then look around asking, where was Bakugo? Midori would say, oh, the phone takes a while for it to soften up enough for someone else to, you know, get out. So Bakugo's going to be stuck for a while. Everyone would, um, all my would chuckle a bit before saying that they'll have to find a way to free Bakugo a bit. I'm in love. Right now, he asked Young Shoto to accompany him as they freeze over the um the phone before breaking it with a single hit from All Might. As Bakugo will be <clears throat> will be removed from the wall, he said, "That damn nerd! I'll kill him." As he began creating explosions, All Might will place a hand over Bakugo, telling him that he lost the um he lost the test already. So we use this as a learning experience. Bakugo, uh, before he'd walk away from All Might, heading towards the viewing area where everyone else would go over their test. He don't really care about this, because this is about Deku, not about Class 1A. And anyways, as Midoriya, at the end of the day, Midoriya and everyone would head towards the, the dorm room. And the next day, they'd be congratulated. Everyone would be congratulated on how they um, would either be scolded or congratulated on how they did during the, the battle test. Um... <clears throat> He especially said Midoriya did extremely well, thinking uh, well on his feet, but suddenly Midoriya, he should learn to work better with others. Midoriya would not, as he you didn't know that this was his fault, as he normally didn't have to really communicate too much of a plan with Natasha. And they already always had a plan given to them beforehand. And could improvise along the way, should that plan go a bit off the rails. All Might would tell them, <clears throat> that now they had something important to do. Oh, and not all my eyes, I would. Everyone wondered what it was before he said, You now have to pick a class representative. Everyone was switched out before immediately placing their hands up, all except Midoriya. When they, um, then Ida would then come, he would then put then calm and went down, telling them to. Go about it as like a voting sort of ballot. As they were all pointing out that they barely know each other, Ida would say, so whoever gets the most points should be the one chosen to become the um, class president and the vice representative. The class representative along with the vice representative. Everyone is fine and agreeable, and once the test was done, it would be revealed that Deku had the most points, points apparently having around seven, while Momo had um, four. Deku would then say he gives up his spot as the class president and say that he wants Ida to take his spot, saying that that, that was okay with Momo. Momo would nod his head. Everyone would wonder why he'd give up such a position. But everyone would realize that he never placed his hand up, his hand up to um, ask for the position, which means that he never wanted it. Midori says, I don't lead large teams. I'm more of a small team type of person, or, or um, loner, or a duo. Or trio. There's not people. Oh, not many people over four, or four. Um, four, like over um seven or ten, somewhere in that range. I can lead anyone from the numbers of myself all the way to ten, but more than that, nah, it's too much to handle. As um, they would didn't hand off the lunch. It would be there while eating that everyone would ask me, Doya, how was it? Where was he trained? Dory would say that he was trained in the circus for years. Everyone would ask if that was it as he said, yeah, because he can't really reveal that he works for a super secret government agency to those who don't have the parents to know about it. So that would be, uh, well, the hero, the heroes at the way, they obviously have the clearance because Midori is a student there. Um. All Might, Endeavor, the top 10 heroes, obviously. So all of the top 10 heroes would know, <clears throat> along with the Hero Association. That's pretty much it. And they all, they only, they, only they know about Midoriya's history with the circus criminals. Criminals from the circus. <clears throat> okay. I'm a bit tired of recording for now, so I'm going to finish right here for a bit, and then I'll pick it up later.
Okay. So while eating, um, especially discussing Ida's um family ties and everything, and Midoriya revealing that Ida is the brother of um Ingenium, as um Ida will ask how he knew is Midoriya says he has information on all of his um all of his t um classmates' backgrounds and even those of the hero course. Actually um of everyone who joined Way this year and even some of the upperclassmen and the heroes. I want to ask why, as Midori says, never go into a new environment misinformed. As everyone would look at him a bit, really, then an alarm would go off. Midori, who had um, um, took to absorbing all of the codes and everything, would realize that it was just an intruder. He didn't immediately... <clears throat> everyone would watch as Midori would... Um, either would watch as Midori would... Bring out what seems from his pocket a bunch of marbles. He asked Midori if he just carried them. Midori says he never knew when he had to use them. Everyone will watch Midori fling them as they bounced off the many people's heads, getting their attention, watching only to turn around to see someone with their hands out. As one of the marbles bounced back, as Midori began flicking it in his finger as he laid it down and flicked it up again, constantly doing this. He tells them that it's just an intruder alert, telling them to not worry, to look outside to see who the intruder is. And maybe they'd be able to go about this a lot better than just panicking and crushing people. Everyone would look outside to see just the press and would be surprised. And by the end of the day, they would all, um, everyone would be surprised to see that it was the press. And Class 1A would want Midoriya to become, well, the cl um, class president. But Midoriya again would refuse, saying that he really does not want it. Before he then walk away, in the next day when they come back, Aizawa would tell them that they will be going on a trip down to the USJ. Everyone would make a say something about. I think it would, I'm not sure if this happened. Would say something about the Universal Studios of Japan, obviously. Before Aizawa would tell them that that's not what it was. When they would arrive, they would realize that it was nicknamed the USJ because it stands for Unforeseen Simulation Unforced Unforeseen Simulation Joint. Well, I think yeah, I think it meant joint. And when and while when they arrived there, they saw a pro hero waiting or a rocker fan girl, as it was pro hero thirteen. Midori zoned out protein um proteins thirteen's um speech about course because really he knew exactly how to use his skill set perfectly, when to become deadly and when not to, when to use deadly force and when not to. He could never hurt someone if he never intended to. So he he was perfectly fine on this whole speech that um she that um thirteen was given giving. I'm pretty sure thirteen is is a woman, so I'm not sure though. I could be wrong. Anyways, <clears throat> it'd be then that Midoriya um then had him within with everyone else that he noticed a black cloud at the edge. A black mist summoning in from the, well, the, what's the water fountain? Midori, as I would watch Midori would grab his bow before he looked down there. As he noticed the direction Midori was formed, was looking at a bunch of villains had come out of a mist. It was now spreading around the USJ. He told the class that they need to evacuate immediately. But as he rushed down, as a villain was about to attack me, um. Aizawa had, um, as he was in the air, not being able to do anything except for using his capture weapon, which he wouldn't be able to get off in time. The villain would then be hit in the fist, what seems to be by, is that a, is that a boxing glove arrow? As everyone would look to see Midoriya having hit the villain with that boxing glove arrow. He would smile. And he said, I guess it's time for me to go back into the field. So, I believe we just last left off with um, me ending uh, with um, when I last recorded was Deku had just captured a villain while Aizawa was jumping towards them having shot them with an arrow that would wrap around them. As the villain falls to the ground, Deku stares at his teacher before nodding his head as Aizawa continues. Eventually, Kurigiri would come after the students and would warp them all away, even Midoriya. As he lands, as he Begin falling through the air before he hit the water. He places his bow <clears throat> on his back as he gets into the diving position before he hits the water. And he would then swim to the surface before.
before heading towards the boat, but he notices along the way while there that there was someone else, someone in the water coming towards him, what seems to be a shark-like villain. And this was then, we, with, as he's about to try something, Sue would come out of nowhere, kicking the villain away before grabbing Deku with her tongue, flinging him onto the ship. We do you were thanks, Sue. As she says, that <clears throat> As we do this, I'm glad that I have this feature on my uh, thing. As everyone sees that his quiver, um, there's a whole opening on the quiver that closes, that opens all the way. There's, um, there's like multiple openings that open all the way, showing the full quiver. For Midori says, since they seem to like being in that of water, how about this? It tells Sue that he she needs to um, jump up, uh, she needs to get her and Mineta away from the ship off of the ship, saying that he'll be there soon. He puts his arrow he's going to draw and shoots one towards where Aizawa is before attaching it to that, attaching the other end to that of the ship before Sue and them, Sue would jump off, heading towards where Aizawa is, onto the um, shore of the um, of the water section, towards the center. As Bidoya sees all of the villains heading his way, he then fires his arrow. It's his um, electrified arrow, which begins to produce electricity, which shocks all the villains as he jumps off of it. Zip lying down towards where Aizawa is, he's able to kick the gnome off of Aizawa, even though it took tremendous force for him to do so. As <clears throat> Aizawa asks, what is he doing? Kimidoya says, I guess I'm saving you, Sensei. This is then when Shigaraki would go rushing towards Midoriya. Only for Midori to shoot something at the ground as a puff of smoke signifies a smoke. Well, this is a smoke screen. He grabs Isaiah, placing him on his shoulder before jumping as far away as he can, placing him towards where the students are. As he jumps back down into the smoke, he uses infrared to, to find Shigaraki. He draws his bow before saying, I hope she like this. As he fires the arrow, a mist appears around Kurigiri, I mean around Shigaraki, hold, as he begins to hold the arrow there. <clears throat> as the mist clears the show, Kurigiri holding um, what is the arrow. Well, fully clears. It shows Kurigiri holding the arrow. As he says, arrows don't work. As Naruto says, that should have worked. Probably will. Uh, she says, I wouldn't have grabbed that. Only for Kurigiri's metal brace to be conducting the electricity through his mist. Well, since mist is, well, his mist is kind of like, I wouldn't say it's water-based. I don't think Kurigiri's Kurigiri is, is like he has to physically touch it to hold it. He's not warping it away. Kurigiri is literally um, shocking himself. As he lets go of the arrow, he, he stands there shakily. As she looks at Sugar Rock, he's saying, I don't know about this. As Shigaraki says it doesn't matter, he then begins to go about all the points they gave no more. Huh. Regeneration, he said. He points at no move. Uh, he says, that guy? Well, let's see if he can handle this. With his arrow, he draws it back. Well, not his arrow, but he draws his bow. As he shoots, as he uh, releases it, it shoots the arrow, piercing into the no move. As I don't know, Shik Nomu would rip the arrow from its chest. Shigaraki would gloat about how the Nomu would never fall to such a puny weapon. As this is it's not all that puny. Saying that the arrow I just charged you with has nanites and horse tranquilizer in, into it. And unless you have like speed healing like that of a speedster, you could say, yeah, that'll happen. As everyone turns to see Nomu passed out on the ground. And it's because Nomu's um, regeneration isn't as fast as Speedster Speed is. And I got this from the Flash show, if you wonder. I got that idea from this arrow from the Flash show. Sugaraki's eyes were wide and sink. It's not possible. It shouldn't be possible. As Deku says, well, it very well is. Before he says, but now, it's time for you. Sugaraki and Kurigiri noticed way too late. Shigaraki had an arrow attached to his head. As it elongated, it began to shock. No, no, no. But it began to, well, not shock through. 
much. No, no, no. But yeah, I'm not gonna have that happen. You shoot it, and Shigaraki would actually know he had time to grab it before he could decay it, and releases a potent black um gas. I was gonna say glass, a potent gas. As Kirigiri watches as Shigaraki falls unconscious, saying, "Yeah, it'll do that. Just knock out gas." Kirigiri will say. This will not be the end of us. You will see, last you will see of us, child. As Midori will say, yeah, it is. As Kirigiri wonders what he means, Midori inspires another arrow, lodging itself into Kirigiri's brace. As Kirigiri breaks the arrow off, Midori smirks. I'll use this for next time. As he jumps away, Kirigiri walks away on um, Shigaraki. Leaving the normal behind as he sees it as a failure to their master's cause. Everyone else takes care of their villains and heads towards the plaza to see the other the main villains no longer there, only Midoriya. They ask where he went and Midoriya was smart, saying that he drove them away. All on his own. As he heads back towards Aizawa, Aizawa, who was watching Midoriya, would tell him that was a good job. As he grunts, he tells Midoriya, but next time. Listen to what I say. Thank you, Midoriya. As Midoriya agrees, um, he says, but he doesn't agree, he says, I'll think about it. Before he walks away, heading out of the building, as he hits the, as he's about to open the door, he's then hit by it, flung into the congregation, flung into the center once more. As All Might says, I am here. And everyone is also here. Where's that Midoriya? Everyone would point to the door, but seemingly had a Midoriya side, like face and in it, with Midoriya laying on the ground. In the center. All my eyes are wide to see. Oh, yeah, Midoriya! As he rushes towards the deck and retrieve, retrieve him, he, he apologizes profusely before he heads back up with Deku. As I, he asks his other pros coming, um, as he eventually comes, and asks guys out what happened, where the villain. As I would look at Midoriya, saying that Midoriya drove them away all on his own. The pros would be shocked to know that the one quirkless kid in their, well, in, in their school drove away a bunch of villains, saying they even had one, especially after learning that they had one that could take out All Might. Which they pointed to the Nomu, which seemingly was just there. They also noticed that it uh, kind of unconscious, if, if you could call it the Nomu. Well, if you could say the normal had consciousness, but which it does, so I guess. Many of the teachers, um, when Midori would eventually sit up, would ask if he was okay. What, what were the other? What were the villains' quirks? As Midori would say that, well, as far as he knew, that purple mist villain had a warping quirk, but and his entire body was mist, but he could seemingly harden his body in some areas. Not creating like an actual like physical body, but I'm pretty sure he has one. He doesn't tell them about the tracker because he never knows when it'll come in handy. And for the uh, people to know this, for them to know this, there has to be someone. He's under suspicions of maybe there being someone in here to tell tell the pro heroes that there are villains here because he doesn't know that someone else broke in. None of the he, um, none of the students know that someone broke into. So um, Midoriya is under speculation to add someone has told them that this is what they were doing. And doesn't want it getting out. So he decides to keep it to himself. Anyways, as we cut um, to go well, the next day, the next couple of days, days later, um, everyone would arrive with class to see Aizawa there. Not as, not as bad as this before, so it wasn't as felt as much damage, would be there as he tells everyone that the battle was not yet over. Everyone would ask if there was more villains, only for Aizawa to deny it, saying that now they had to choose a class president. Everyone would raise their hands, except for Midoriya. Oh, wait, 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 that's not it. Damn. I'm, I'm on a wrong game. Uh, everyone, he would say their battle was not. Everyone would ask what is that is as I would say that they now had two weeks to prepare for this course festival. 
everyone would calm down after hearing this, but then get excited. This was like one of the, this is something that they've all watched since they were children. Even Midoriya's watched this, but he isn't as excited as everyone else. He can, he can show whenever he's excited, but he's excited, but doesn't feel like showing it right now. Midoriya continues to wait there. And um, continues there, and as, as I'll explain, he's saying that they'll have the next two weeks off, along with the facilities of UA open to them. Telling them to enjoy, saying that they'll be free for now to go do what they wish. Everyone would leave except for Midoriya. Midoriya, as I would ask Midoriya what is it that he needs, as I was as a sparring partner. As I was smirks before, he walks over towards Midoriya, saying, Very well. And this is how Midoriya spends his next two weeks sparring with Aizawa constantly. Now, since Midoriya is actually quirkless, he gets his full gear, which technically would give him put him on equal equal grounds with everyone else because of it. And while there, Midoriya um, requests specialized arrows, knowing that he'll more than likely be facing his classmates. Because while not only does he know every everyone. And way he knows all the quirks of these people. So he even knows about Todoroki's quirk, like his full quirk, like his being have ice have um have fire and um, have have what do we have cold and hot. Anyways <clears throat> and he needs a way to deal with Todoroki. Now, I know a lot of you guys know that this was a pivotal pivotal Moment in the anime. But right now, Midori is going to be fighting for himself. So do not expect Midori to try to help other people throughout the, um, the sports festival. And you know who I'm speaking of. So, <clears throat> anyways, at the next two um, class, everyone would head to school and would get prepared. Midori is actually, when, when most of class 1A arrives, I see Midori is there after leaving from the dormitories. Um, Head towards class one a, um class one a where they meet Midoriya. Only to realize Midoriya is in their hero costume. They ask why is Midoriya in it as as always says Midoriya is the only literal literally the only quirkless student in UA. As far as UA is concerned, Midoriya is the only person allowed really to wear his entirety of his um hero costume. Saying that there are some people whose quirks aren't suited for combat, but they do have quirks nonetheless and are usable in some certain situations. So obviously, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. They all, um, they have those advantages that Midoriya doesn't. Anyways, moving on, we now cut to everyone going into the UN entrance exams. Well, not to the entrance exams to the stadium where the sports festival will be held. And to say the least, everyone is surprised and amazed at the sheer size, along with seeing all the pro heroes there. As they head to their locker rooms, while there, <clears throat> Shoto approaches Midoriya, saying that you managed to scare away, a, you managed to defeat a villain that was powerful enough to take out All Might. You defeated the two ring leaders behind the villain attack on us, Two days ago, um, two oh, two weeks ago. This is my declaration of war, Midori. Beyond notice, Midori would look at him before putting down his sunglasses to bed. He stares at <clears throat> Shoto, telling him, "I guess, but you really shouldn't make that type of how should I say this threat." Someone like me. As she smiles at uh, Shoto, Kirishima eventually comes and tells them that they shouldn't try to pity, they shouldn't be pitting up against each other, at least until they're, you know, fighting, actually fighting each other in the arena. Unless they're actually fighting against each other. They eventually all head out and are waiting there as a midnight calls the stupid student re representative. And that student representative is Midoriya. 
everyone's shocked to see when some kid in a full out hero costume would come toward would walk up to the stage. Yori would look at them before saying, Really, there's nothing I could say. I could say I could beat you all, but there are some of you guys that I know I'm not confident of beating on my own. And that there are some and there are some ways where I can beat you and some ways where I can't, and I understand that. So this is what I'm going to say. I hope you do your best, as the entire world's eyes are on you now. As he walks away. The students um, found it quite amazing that he wasn't like he wasn't like going to insult them about how he was gonna beat them. He says that there are some strategies of ways, there's some ways where he can beat them, but he's also knew that he will lose if he did fight some of them. He, he could lose with fighting them, some of them. And he wasn't overly arrogant about it. As Midnight been called for that of the um, board to choose what is next. They would then, when the board's finished, they will learn that they'll be taking an obstacle course. As everyone readies, Midoriya, <clears throat> who's at the back, waits. As the um, as the race starts, Aizoto would freeze everyone. Except for Midoriya, as his eyes didn't go back that far. Midoriya, who's one of the few people aren't who is there, stuck, <clears throat> would you know, get through the people, even though some of them tried to grab him to keep him from moving. He would eventually make it to the front where he, with an um, explosion arrow, would explode the ice um, the ice in front of him, allowing him to continue without slipping. I think, I'm not sure if Osoto put an ice wall. I mean, he should have, but he did it. I don't think he did. But he a wall, the <clears throat> explosion. As he ran along the way, seeing all of the um, robots around him, he caught up to Shoto, who was no faster than he is. Well, who he is actually really faster than, unless Shoto is skating on ice, but even that doesn't give him that much of a speed increase. As Midoriya's um, caught up, catches up to Shoto, he draws an arrow, shooting, um, draws what seems to be three arrows at once and shoots them, all of them going into different directions, hitting many of the um, robots around him, ex causing explosions. As Midori continues along the way while Shoto has to stop and freeze a zero pointer. As Midori is seemingly cleared his own path, he eventually made it past that and the first obstacle, I believe the first obstacle was the robot, and the second obstacle would be the fall. Once making it there, he could easily um just zip line across there with um with the help of his uh, by turning his bow into the staff form. He can zip line across a bit, and since it doesn't have the string, it doesn't get caught, and he can just simply flip his way onto the rock and continue zipping across. He'd eventually make it there, and then would head towards what is the minefield. He would turn on <clears throat> this is his thermal vision and his glasses, which shows the location of every single one of the mines. Huh. <clears throat> Midoriya will see where he is and will smirk. Looking at his surroundings, he draws his zipline bow. Well, two arrows. One is in the bow as he shoots it towards the other side of the, of the minefield. As he turns around and shoots it at the frozen and one of the zero pointers that is behind him, shoots it there connecting a zipline. And he connects his bow across it as he slides over the mines, making sure he doesn't hit them. As he lands there, he releases the arrow. And uh, continues to run. Shoto and Bakugo are surprised by this, and even try Bakugo even tried to use the zip line only for Midori to cut it, obviously, and him to fall, hitting a mine. But he would then get up as he didn't want to lose to Deku, who was quirkless. As Midori continues along his way there, he eventually makes it to that of the finish line, being the first one there. Everyone's surprised they know that the quirkless kid of UA was the first one, was able to beat all the other quirk kids. Even the one that had engines, he would supposedly have a variation of some sort of speed quirk. I mean, Doria stood there panting. He said, oh man, I did it. As he Doria would stand there, eventually Bakugo and Shoto would check would check it out. And once everyone else does, Midnight explains that there are 40 people who passed and say that the next battle would be the cavalry as the screen showed. 
saying that you can get into teams of up to four, but I think you need like at least two. But you can get up to teams up to I think it was up to four or five. And it's saying that the points from the forty person go up by five. So everyone would think that Deku has I can't remember what the number was. <clears throat> I can't remember what the number was, but everyone would think that he would have that said number, but he would only be revealed that he had, I think, what was it, like 10 million points or a million points? It was one of those. Everyone would be surprised to hear this, and a lot of people would look at Midoriya thinking he'll be an easy target, but he does still have the same team as before. I think there's um, Tokoyami. Uh, May Hatsume, um, Uraraka, and Deku. They eventually meet up with Deku and Uraraka, who's friends with Midoriya. Tokiyami actually admires Midoriya for becoming a hero, even though he's quirkless. And May Hatsume, because Deku is num- um, literally in the spotlight of everyone being quirkless, the only quirkless kid in QA, and being coming at number one. As our teams go by, Midoriya is literally just hitting people with arrows or blowing them away with explosion arrows or um, uh, blinding them with flashbang arrows to con- to keep them out of the way. It even hits a couple, especially Bakugo, with an arrow that's, um, that like it's like a um, blunt force arrow. So it has like a blunted tip. I'm like, it's like a foam, like a hard foam that, that, that can shoot that Bakugo's face or his jaw. It's like a boxing glove arrow, but yet more practical, to be honest. Anyways, <clears throat> everyone, it would go mostly not a uh, look uh, like Ken and stuff. No one ever takes me Doria's headband because he has he's he's the one on top and can see mostly everyone coming, and it has countermeasures to mostly all the one A's of one of the people. Who will you know be a threat? One A's own, you know, one A's own. Uh, what is it called? That has one A. Um, all the one A's. Um, well, everyone is quirks. As he has all the, um, the first year's quirks. He knows all of them and have countermeasures to most of them. As he comes out on top, um, they would then get a um. That would then be learned of the next, um, the next fourteen would um, be chosen, only for um, Ojiro and uh, that other kid to drop out because we controlled by Shinso and um, Ibarai and no, I know, yeah, I think it's Ibarai and Tetsu Tetsu to take their place. Once that happened, um, hmm, how do I say? This? And we get a res- a hour of recess. As Midori is approached by what seems to be someone in a black suit, they give him a brief ca- a large briefcase which has all the specialized arrows he required. The other specialized arrows he asked for, and replacement arrows for those he lost. Using the much bigger quiver that these came in, he replaces um, leftover arrows in there. As he smirks. As he's now ready for the um next the next battle, which is technically like a um, one-on-one tournament. While out there, he's approached by um uh, actually I don't think he'll be approached by Endeavor yet, but I will help him be approached by Endeavor. Once there, everyone will learn how their matchups. Being Katoshi Senso being the first one versus Midoriya, since I don't really remember or care about the other and. Everyone else's matchups that I can. Re- oh, it's not that I don't care. It's that I don't remember. I can't really say I don't care because I really do like uh, my hero Academia, to be honest. Anyways, as Midoriya stands there, unfazed. I'm just kidding. Um, as Midoriya stands there in the ring with Shinzo, Shinzo will say it must be nice for a quirk. It must be nice for a quirkless kid to get in ahead of others whose um, quirks aren't suited for combat. That you've had your entire life to train, and I bet that bow and arrows are the only reason you got in. Midoriya will say, I train my butt off. He looks at Senso because most other heroes can't hear them. Only those with like 
animal life works, which I will have included in here, but um, Baru- um Baruka. Anyways, you know who I'm talking about. You would say that he <clears throat> was, for years, was ki- he was adopted by a ring of, cri- of circus criminals who robbed every single city they went to, and, while also being protected by heroes because they were consistent of people with weak quirks, and quirk was people who would constantly be attacked, by who were constantly attacked by villains because they were easy targets. And they used this as a Advantage to rob the banks and everything to get away with it. Saying that I was a born of them for years until I decided to take my life into my own hands. And I def- and with um the death of what was my adopted parents and brother by my own hands, I managed to leave with what money I had taken from them. I got away from their life as most of the other circus the people in the circus were put were placed were incarcerated. I went to the states where I trained ex- even more extensively. You have no excuses, so you've had all the time to train, even because your quirk isn't well, as you call it, com and usage of com best in usage of combat. So it would be angry. Not even think about activating his work because he hadn't thought about it while talking to Doria. He did, he calmed down for a second before telling me Doria. As Doria would be about knowing Shinso's work, Doria would look at him. Before he, he pressed a button on his bow, <clears throat> he before he pressed a button on his bow, as his bow transforms into a staff form as he begins spinning it around. As he rushes towards Shinso, he hits him aside the head twice with both ends of the bow of the well the staff, um like the little bow staff, like the actual staff portion. You know what I'm saying? He hits him with both ends before kicking Shinso in the gut. As Shinso skits on before he eventually gets up, telling him enough, only for Midori to have dropped the bow and to rush towards him even further. As Shinso tries to throw a punch. Midori will grab him before tossing him on his back as he grab an arrow and point it at Shinzo's throat, telling him to give. Shinzo, who didn't activate his quirk, would say, I give. As Midori is smirks, telling him he has no excuse now. Saying that I didn't even really use a bow or an arrow. I used all the skills that I learned when I found out I couldn't be a hero. When I knew I couldn't be a hero with a Shinzo gets up, as Midori goes to reclaim his bow staff and transforms it back into a bow with the press of a button. Midoriya and then head to the stands where everyone would congratulate him, even those of 1B, except for Monoma. My Monoma does have a bit more respect for Midori than he does of anyone. Because Midori is quirkless and yet got above them. He still hates Class 1A, but not hates, but extremely dislikes that of Class 1A with the pack. As we cut to the next round, everyone who had won in Ken is obviously going to win, which is why there's no deviations in any game. Everyone who had lost in Canon will lose. Everyone who wins in Canon will win. There's no point in going over their matches. So we move on to the next match, which is Midoriya versus. Of Shoto. And on, on his way there, Amidoria is stopped by Shoto who explains how he came to be. How his father's greed for um for wanting to become number one hero caused him to invoke a quirk marriage by buying his mother's parents and then sell um having their daughter married to his father. Where he eventually had three other kids before having him. Midori would tell him, I don't really care about all that Shoto. You should really. I'm sorry to say this. To be honest, Shadow, I don't think you should care about your old man as much as you do. That's my own opinion. All you're doing is harming yourself by holding back. And I'll show you that. Just as much as I have to say before he walks away. 
Soto looks at Midoriya before he walks away himself, and he stopped once more. It's by Endeavor. Endeavor tells Midoriya he wants him to give up, saying that there's no way a worthless kid like him will beat his Shoto, his masterpiece. As Midoriya looks at him, he tells, he tells Endeavor that he should really never lose, lose track of anyone who's in front of his hands. As Endeavor feels the heat around his body go down to all the way to normal temperature, he notices there are these weird cuffs on his hands. He asks, what are these? He says, those are quirk canceling cuffs. I have a pair of them. Like two or two of them. I have like three of them. <laughs> Quite useful, I must say, for making, you know, a rest. He tells Endeavor to go throughout the entirety of the um interest um throughout the entirety of the <clears throat> the sports festival without it, saying that anyone who touches them will you lose their quirk also. So unless you have someone freeze them, well, which they can handle, or heat them up, which they can also handle, and it's pretty much you're screwed. As he walks, as he continues on his way, he eventually makes it towards the arena, where he stands there in front of Shoto. And one smirks as they see Midoriya have his arrow on his bow, ready to draw it. As Midnight starts the match, before Shoto could do anything, Midoriya jumps out of the way as he shot a, as he um as he and Shoto would spew an iceberg at the place where Midoriya once were once more. He would then see the other corner of his eye, Midoriya, shh, I am going to charge something. But it moves way too fast for him to counter it, or for him to even use his quirk. <clears throat> He's hit across the jaw. As Shoto gets up, he sees Midoriya heading towards his way. He tries to shoot another, um, a, a bunch of icicles at Midoriya, only for Midoriya to jump off of one of them. And using and to dodge the others. As he dodges the other, he jumps off the last one, pointing it at Shoto. As he tells Todoroki he's really sorry about this. It shows, he says, I hope your code can keep up with this. As he fires the arrow, it opens and Shoto it attaches itself to Shoto. As he says it's an it's it's an, it's an arrow that exhibits a lot of heat, actually, as the shell breaks off. Shoto, he says, it's meant to counter the natural ice that your, the natural ice that your body can produce. He then appears behind Shoto, telling him he's sorry about this. It is with his hands, he drops the bow and place, quickly places cuffs on, on Shoto's hands. Shoto asks Midoriya, what is this? As Midoriya says, we're canceling cuffs. Your old man has a pair on himself. As Shoto looks up to see Endeavor that um. Standing there with his hands together with the cuffs in front on his wrist, say, Shoto, don't lose. You're my masterpiece. I will not tolerate such failure. Shoto will look at Midori before Midori and say, Night Night. As he punched Shoto in the face, everyone will watch it. Shoto will be sent out of the ring. Not too far, but you know, like a normal, like enhanced human uh, fist hitting Shoto, sending him out of the ring as he passes out. Midnight will crown Midori in the winner. As Midori smirks, he looks, he gets back to the top where everyone congratulates him, saying that they never thought he'd win. As Midori says, yeah, but he says that's something he must speak to Todoroki with after the sports festival. Everyone wonders what that is. But Midoriya doesn't go into detail about it. And now we move on to the next round. Midoriya versus Ida. Especially after learning what he had to do, he made sure he has the arrow ready to disperse. As he smirked. <clears throat> he looked at Ida, who looked at him. As Midnight started the match, Ida would begin to try to use his reciprocal burst, only for Midori to have fired an arrow what seemed to be at the center of the ring. Ida had stopped, wondering what it did, only for him to notice the entire ring was being frozen. As Midori says, 
try to do that now. Before either can act one of what Midoriya's seen, Midoriya fires another arrow, hitting Ida in the stomach. Ida caught spits up a bit before me. He looks back towards Midoriya, only to notice he's not in the same spot. Midoriya had thrown a smoke bomb down around or surrounding Ida. Ida's trying to wants to use his reciprocal burst, but he doesn't know. Only for it, he didn't hear a whizzing noise and another arrow to hit his leg, only for it to freeze over. As Ida says, no. He says specialized arrows made with um the help of people with quirks. Being an age of quirks is quite useful, has, has its perks. As he looks at Ida, pointing another arrow at, directly at Ida, Ida's head, turning, 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 turning on the red dot, to show Ida that he was aiming directly at his head. I think Ida can give up. Otherwise, the next one, well, he won't live to see the next one. Ida size is giving up. You have to think about it. Midoriya is not going to give much of anyone else a chance because he's quirkless. He's going up against people with quirks. You have to think of it from that standpoint. And Hawkeye is pretty badass, taking on superpowered aliens constantly, superpowered robots. Other superpower heroes at times, if you've seen, you know, if you've seen Civil War and much else. Hawkeye is that guy. He's one of those guys. Just like you, I have so much respect for I'm the Black Widow because of what she does. You know, like, come on, they're like, they're literal superpowers people. It's like I have as much respect for Batman. Well, well yeah, Batman. And... What was his name? What was shit? Oh, Green Arrow. I was thinking. I was trying to think of it. Um, Nightwing, Robin. You know all those people. All the people who don't have superpowers and yet put their bodies on the line. Things like that. And don't have like um like not unlike Iron Man. Like Batman has his fair share of times where I like I lose that respect because he's using something that gives him an edge. Like not like that much of an edge. Like. He literally has a suit that he uses to fight Superman. Like, what am I supposed to think about that? A one that he uses to fight Darkseid. Like, come on. That one could be straight. You know, they're natural talents. Not only the natural, but you know, they're straight up talents. Not overly reliant on tech. You know what I'm saying? You give, I hope you guys get what I'm trying to say. I don't get what I'm trying to say, but I hope you guys do. Anyways, let's move on. As we come to the um, to the final round, it would be Midoriya versus Bakuga. Midoriya smirks. He tells Bakuga, "This has been a long time coming." As he cracks his knuckles, Bakuga would say, "Yeah, yeah, it has been definitely. You deserve a beating." You earned this. As Midoriya will say, well then, Bakugo, bring it on. Midnight will start the match. As Bakugo tries to hit Midoriya with an explosion, only for Midoriya to dodge it away. As Midoriya runs towards him, he tries to use the AP shot, but Midoriya's agility is strong, but good enough for him to dodge this also. Getting in close with Bakugo, Midoriya will hit him in the face and breaking Bakugo's nose. Bakugo will hold it before he'd hold out his hands, trying to use it, re release a supercharged explosion. Only for Midori to smirk as he jumps away, telling Bakugo, you shouldn't have done that. You should always pay attention to your opponents. As Bakugo looks down to hear beeping, only for a phone to surround Bakugo's entire body. As Naruto says, I'm not Naruto, Deku says that that phone is meant to counter his quirk. It's attacking the natural glycerin and your sweat. Essentially makes so where you can't create explosions anymore. And it's now hardening. As it shows Midoriya, Midoriya say again, living in the age of quirks has been a blessing. Imagine what it would be like if there was no age of quirks and these things like this were to be possible. I just smirked at Bakugo. Bakugo said, you think I care? As he'd rip around trying to get out of it, 
he'd um, eventually be able to break himself out as Midoriya told Midnight not to call it a match. Midnight would, um, they would then watch his buckle break out, mostly except for it's around his arms. Like it's around his, like his hands, so he can't really create much of explosions. As Bakugo tries to swing his, like, literally what's a club hand at Deku, Deku would dodge it, kicking Bakugo's feet from under him, causing Bakugo to hit his head on the concrete. As Bakugo not, falls unconscious. And Midori would look at Midnight saying, now you can call the match. The people of the arena cheer for Bakugo, for Deku, even though he's a bit ruthless with that, um, you know, the finisher, saying that he couldn't have been not called the match before. This was, well, he was quite so I guess they see it as him using his own, his advantages, having his own advantages. Midori was, was smiling, everyone cheers him on. As he's basked in the, what is the applause and the attention he's gaining from this. Everyone was seeing Endeavor standing there, bristling in anger, as he's about to say something, only for something to clog his mouth. It was Midoriya who had shot another arrow, which um, like produced some sort of um, fabric that surrounded, um, um, that surrounded Endeavor's mouth. It was actually what he was going to use against, um, that of, show, um, not show though, um, Shinso, 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 there, there we go, originally, but he didn't use it, somehow. he had a better use of it, better reason, better um, use of it, as eventually comes the ceremony, where everyone, on um, the award ceremony, where Deku was standing there, Bakugo would have to be tied for him to not attack Midoriya, and both Tokoyami, oh, since Ida had to leave again, Tokoyami would be the only one there to claim his third place medal. All my will tell them to um to go forward, as most people would yell. Well, almost everyone except All my would yell plus Ultra. From there, we cut to I think it was like a week after this. Everyone will return to class once more, having actually been released to go back, actually back home to stay with their parents for a while. When they come here, Endeavor um showed sh- um sh- shout to Aizawa would then tell them that he was actually proud of their performance and that of the um what is it? Why is my chair so fucking stinky? Um, he was actually proud of their performance and the sports festival for telling them they all he's really he's telling them that thanks to that performance you've all been given well, work study. No, it's, I think that is, um, no, that's internships, internships, that's what they got, um, work studies, I think it was, like, later, or I'm mixing it too up, I don't really, can't really tell, looking really tired, anyways, and as I would say this, he tells them, um, that normally this is only given to the second years, but because of their superb performance, they have a chance at having it, as he brings up all of the as he brings up all of the, uh, what is it? Um, all of the offers, internship offers, everyone will be shocked to see Midoriya having the least amount. Well, not the least amount, having like less than both Todoroki and Bakugo. Midoriya will see that as expected because, you know, he's quirkless, so he really expected this. He looks up, everyone gets their list and looks over it. Midoriya already knows who he's going to internship with. As he looks at the pro hero's name, he smirks. As he says, I wonder who's the better shot, me or him. As we tie a skip, Midoriya is at the way while everyone else is leaving. As he walks to a class, he knocks on the door only to see the pro hero he decides to intern with, Snipe. Snipe will say, ah, Midoriya, you've accepted my intern. My internship offer. That's good. As Midoriya says, yeah, I wanted to know who was the better shot of the two. And of course, 
if I could give you some more advice. Snipe with a smile. And I give her a small laugh before it's telling me, you got a long way, kid, before you reach my level. As Midori says, oh, is that so? As Snipe draws his, um, and it goes to draw his revolver as he brings it out, Midoriya had already tossed something at him. Since it's like a green arrow thing. He tossed what seems to be like a small, tiny arrow, which had now plugged that of the, <clears throat> plug that of, um, what is it? Well, I don't know what the, that hole in the gun, so it literally exploded if Snipe tries to fire it. Snipe says, you're quite, quite the marksmanship you've shown. I guess your marksmanship doesn't only relate to your bow and arrow. It really doesn't. I prefer to use the bow and arrow, though. You just can't seem to miss. That's Snipe's smirk at it. He asked had he chosen the hero name, as he said, yeah, everyone else is his canon, and he said, I've chosen the hero name, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Good name. Very good. Well then, we'll be heading to Hosu in a couple of days for patrol. I heard the hero skill is there, and I want to give a crack at it. Get a crack at trying to catch him. I will say this, Midoriya, if you come across him, I will be giving you you will have full permission to take him down. You know when I'm saying that if if that's the case, then I need some special. I need a special arrow made. As I uh, um as he asks, are you going to the support court? This Midoriya shakes his head, saying someone else handles my um, equipment. Never letting the support courts go anywhere near this that it's all government equipment that he's been given and old lab equipment well obviously as he looks at his bow and arrow that's not says very well there for now let's see how well you're doing in the field or how well you do against others and for me every time skip three days they're now heading to Hosu Midoriya having gotten the special arrows he requested as he smirks, Midoriya and um, Snipe would arrive to Hosu only f as he sees a bunch of the other pro heroes, especially that of Endeavor and Shoto there. He wonders what they're doing there, only for them, as Midoriya is separate, um, as along their way, they eventually get attacked, well, well with Snipe, they eventually get attacked by Nomu. Snipe tells Midoriya to get a uh, to get a vantage point. He see they're gonna try and they need to get a vantage point and take these things out of the air. Midoriya nods as he goes to his vantage point, but with his vantage point, he's able to see into the alleyway where Ida is. He calls to Snipe, saying that he's found a hero killer and he will be pursuing him. As Midoriya shoots a zipline arrow, he says, I "Only got one shot at this." As he clips himself to it rather than using. So he draws the special arrow he requested. As um, Stain looks at the kid, wondering what this kid is going to do, as he sees the arrow with passing his dodge. As he turns around to see Midoriya, Midoriya says, Got you. As he fires an arrow, Snipe, um, since um, Stain wonders what exactly this is, as the kid hits him, but the arrow bounces off of him. As Midoriya lands right next to Ida, Midoriya tells Stain, night night. As he presses two buttons, as um, everyone could see electricity coming off of the device and shocking Stain all over. As he screams out in pain, as he falls to the ground unconscious. Midoriya would bring out his special, his quirk handcuffs. The two of them he, re he regained from both Endeavor and Shoto, placing them on Stain. He would then place a knockout gas inside of Stain in case he ever woke up again. He'd go to Ida before healing his arm, um, before um, giving him first aid. As Ida asks, what is he doing here? As Midori says, well, we were fighting the Nomus when I see, when I happened to see what was happening here. He then, once finishing managing up um, that of uh, Ida, he would then look at Native before helping him. As Native would thank me, Doria. Native would scold um would scold that of um Ida for going after the hero killer. As he asked me, Doria, 
who was he? Why did he go after? Saying that Midoriya was saying, well, I obviously, like I said, I saw you two fighting. Um, I saw the hero killer along with Ida, and I decided to intervene, saying I got permission from my um, superior, Snipe. As Native nods, Midoriya would then grab, would pick Stain up, tossing him over his shoulders. He tells them to let's go. They walk out of the alleyway with Ida, with their injuries. Edith and Native sustaining, helping each other stand. Well, since they're both able to stand at this point, helping each other. As um, Midoriya walks out of the alleyway, they eventually converse with the other heroes. Seeing the other heroes will turn around only to see Midoriya and Native and um, Ida, but was stayed on Midoriya's. On Midoriya's um, shoulder, and then never recognizes the handcuffs, saying, "There's no way you took down the hero killer." And Midoriya looked at him before smirking. He said, "Yes way." Snipe will look at him before telling, "Hey kid, I need you." As Midoriya tells him to watch out, he draws an arrow and hits the Nomu dead in the eye before it explodes. As his head, as the Nomu, this is the Nomu that would go on to grab someone, would fall to the ground with his head missing. Everyone would look at Midoriya as Midoriya says, watch out. As he smirks, Snag walks up to the game for telling him a good job. As he says, now it's time to get these this guy onto onto over to the authorities. Eventually a news crew would arrive to see Midoriya with Stain um with Snipe with Stain. They ask um Snipe if he's the one who took down Stain, the Euro killer. Only for Stain to place his hand on Midoriya saying that this kid did it all on his own, from what I can, from the story I've gotten, from the others that were with him. All by himself, he did a job that other pro heroes could not do. As he says, you're Midoriya Izuku, the first um, quirkless student at UA. As Midoriya or not, they say, well, congratulations on taking out on staying a hero killer. Do you have any words? Midoriya says, no, not really. Well, yeah, it's a part of my job. As he smirks, he walks away. As he eventually hands Stain over to the to the um, authorities, and um, was Stain returned back to um, where is UA located? Hold up, Musutafu for um, <clears throat> which is apparently where UA is ranked. Um, is um, well located at now ranked. Heading back there towards the academy, where Aizawa will be there waiting for the two, telling Midori he did a good job, but to head towards Dorn, saying that he has to speak. And I have to say that these Aizawa was pretty angry with Snipe for allowing him to Midoriya to take on the hero killer on his own. Snipe would rebuttal, saying that it wasn't really his fault, saying that he was tied up with taking out those nomus that attacked him. What did he want to do to leave the other pro heroes there to deal with it? He's saying that thanks to Midoriya, another nomu almost could could have kid would um a nomu didn't kidnap someone. Now, Midori is a lot is more of a pro than any of the other students in the way. He has what it takes, saying that all we really should do is really teach Midori the laws and everything and the regulations of being a hero. Saying that's why he's putting Midori forward to um instead of taking a provisional hero's test, like to get his hero's license, provisional hero's license, is recommending Midori to get a full hero license. It shocked Aizawa to hear this. As Snipes nods, he says he thinks Midoriya is ready, and he won't hold Midoriya back because of what I was saying. Saying that Midoriya will finish the first, Midoriya will finish the first year here. But other than that, there's nothing much else for him to. See. Other than that, Midoriya will be gone. Saying that he has Midoriya will have the choice to continue here, continue learning while also being a pro hero, if he if he so chooses. Aizawa was sighing as he looks at Snipe to see as if he's really serious about this. Aizawa Snipe nods, saying that I got to speak to Midoriya. Did you know the kid worked for a special, special military um, organization that protects the world that has global um, security? That's um, it's a global security organization. He takes on villains with quirks all the time with him. For a year he was doing that. He's only 14, which means. Yeah, he did that while he was 13. And apparently, they want him back after becoming a hero. 
So that's what Midori will more than likely be doing, saying that he hopes to achieve his dream of becoming number one hero. But let's be honest, the public will never accept the quirkless hero as number one hero. As I was side saying that that sadly is the truth of this reality, saying hopefully Midori, with his own stunts, will be able to show the world that they shouldn't look down on him and that he can be their number one hero. He says. Of all the kids I've seen, I hope Midoriya has, I hope, I genuinely hope for Midoriya to reach his true dreams and not to be held back because of prejudice against quirkless people. Snipe nods as they head back inside. From here, we time skip to the end of the work studies. So I believe we're standing and to going into the Going to the summer camp. So everyone will be looking into wondering what they would be doing and studying for the final test. Well, I think it's like the midterms or the finals for, well, before they have to go to, yes, the finals so they can go to a summer camp. So everyone begins studying and they want, think that they'll be take. they ask around trying to figure out what test they'll be doing. For the physical or the practical portion of the finals. But they figure that they'll be taking out robots. Maybe Dorian already knows what they'll be doing and is preparing. As he smiles. Anyways. Me Doria stands there. <clears throat> As time goes on, everyone eventually makes a plan to meet up. But not Midoriya. Midoriya just has to train. He's already smart enough to do basically do what he wants, to be honest. Um, he's pretty, basically smart enough to go ahead and to pass the finals on his own. So he doesn't need to study. And he ranks within the top three. So he ranks third in the class out of 20. Anyways. And, well... Everyone else's ranking stand is at Midori. Where did Deku rank in Canada? I can't remember. But oh well. Once there, everyone would head toward, towards a, in their hero costume, it seems to be to one of the testing sites. Where they then say, be happy about fighting robots, only for Nezu to drop the bomb on them about fighting teachers. Everyone would be a bit you know, confused, saying that they thought they were fighting the robots. And I, as Nezu says, he came up with this as a much better option. Only for Midoriya to reveal that he already knew that this is what they'd be doing. Many would ask, why wouldn't he, you know, tell them, but... Oh, um, Midoriya would just shrug their shoulders. Nezu would say, that's quite surprising, he only if I didn't know that you would correct this, I would say that you probably... I would say you probably have an intelligence increase in Quirk, or intelligence boost in Quirk. As Midoya looks at him. Anyways. As Midoya stands there. <clears throat> he continues... As Midoriya continues, um, well, as Midoriya stands there, he eventually waits around as Nezu sees Midoriya's not going to say anything else. Nezu goes on and then tells Midoriya, uh, and then tells the rest of the class who they'll be fighting, pairing them up with their, well, with the teachers and their teammates. Deku will still get Bakugo, who, to be honest, isn't any, is like a lot worse than the canon Bakugo. Because Deku, while still being quirkless, is a quirkless person who still managed to get there. Even though they, Deku spent years apart from Bakugo. It's like because it's like because Bakugo couldn't believe that someone he knew that was quirkless was accepted into UA. It just made it a, like 10 times worse than Canon Midori and Canon Bakugo. So when it's Midoriya and Bakugo's turn, Midoriya already knows All Might is going to be looking for him on high purchase. Or in high purchases or in, in the alleyways. 
So rather he, he hides within the buildings. Using his pose. Shit. He noises this Midoriya gets inside of a building that has pretty good um, view of the entirety of the city. He hears explosions on in the background. And then looks that direction to find Bakugo fighting All Might. And through his comms, he can hear All Might asking Bakugo <clears throat> where he was. What if a Bakugo that says, who cares about that loser? As Midoriya scoffs, he takes a shot. All Might would catch the arrow. As All Might looks... In the direction of where the arrow is fired, he doesn't see anything. As Midoriya had hidden behind the wall next to the window, so All Might couldn't see where he was. All Might would look at the arrow, only to notice that it was beeping as he tried to let it, as he tried to drop it, but it was too late. And it began to release the gas. As All Might began to cough, he threw the arrow away, but the gas, he had breathed in too much, as he found it difficult to breathe. <laughs> As he continued to cough, so did Bakugo. Midoriya thinks maybe that'll straighten that. Maybe that'll straighten his attitude out. As both Bakugo and All Might fall unconscious. <clears throat> Anyways, as Midoriya, but eventually makes his way towards him, he sees All Might unconscious. Not only does he place the handcuffs on All Might. He picks All Might up over his shoulder and then places Bakugo on his other shoulder and walks towards the edge of the game with the two of them, crowning them the winner. However, after learning, after um, eventually Bakugo will wake up, they will learn that they would not pass. They could ask why didn't he? As they said the two of them didn't work together well, at or at all, to be honest. Midoriya says, then why would you place me with a person who obviously holds contempt for people who are quirkless? If anything, I don't deserve to pass. I don't deserve to fail. <clears throat> As I and everyone would look at Midoriya. As Midoriya says, but it's fine, I guess. As he walks away, Aizawa looks at All Might, saying that we really should talk to Midoriya. And we should really talk, speak to Midoriya about his relationship with Bakugo. I don't think it's the best that Midoriya acts this way. All Might would agree, saying that he worries for you know, Midoriya. And if he continues to act like this, what this effect will it have on his classmates and how they view him? And the type of human he'll come to be in the future. So as they so as they sit there <clears throat> waiting for Midoriya, um, Midoriya would learn that he'll be in the middle remedial classes. Nazawa would want to speak with him personally, but Midoriya would scoff and walk away. As Midoriya brings out a phone, he dials a number as he sighs. As he picks it up, he's, he he says one sentence. I think you are right. The person on the other side saying, So, would you join us? Yes. I don't think coming to UA was the best choice. I see that now. Anyways, Midori would eventually hang up the phone call, only to be confronted by Zawa asking who was that. As Midori would say, my boss, an old boss at least. As he asks, why doesn't as Midori would say, Mr. Aizawa, to be honest, coming to UA was just a dream, a childhood dream that I held on since I was four or five. But now I look at it, it's not for me. Being going these going the route of a hero, yes. I would love to do so. 
but I've already been doing this whole hero thing for a year, for for a couple of months before I even came to UA, back to Japan at least. I chose to give that up to come here to, you know, have a, a to be able to accomplish my childhood dream. But I see that dreams are meant to be that just dreams. This is a waste of my time, to be honest. And I think I'll be dropping out sometime soon. Don't worry, you'll see me around. Aizawa sighs as Midoriya walks away. <clears throat> we eventually cut to everyone um in class. Um, even Midoriya is sitting there. As, as Midoriya sits there. He sits in class. As they receive the news and tell them to prepare. They all get a week off to go and to gather all the supplies they'll need for the summer camp. Midoriya and everyone decides to head, they decide to head towards the mall, but Midoriya doesn't is unwilling to go, but is forced when Bakugo gives well <clears throat> when um they approach Aizawa about Midoriya's address anyway. <clears throat> they show up at Midoriya's door. As as they grab him, they bring him out. Midoriya's not too happy about it. As he sighs, as he's at the mall, he eventually separates from the rest of his class. He has everything he needs in his dorm. Well, well, obviously he would need at his dorm, but for this week, they are, they're not at the dorms. They're with their parents. They do get time to go home, and this is one of those times. As Midoriya sits there, he's eventually approached by a guy in a hoodie. But before he can place his hands on Midoriya, Midoriya throws him over his shoulders into the water fountain, causing the civilians to panic. As Midoriya asks, who is he? Shigaraki will place his... Midoriya will see the weird-looking hands in this... Strangers markings on then the weird days on his um on his the scratch marks. You notice he remembers his face. You. As Shigaraki looks at Midoriya, he smirks before Midoriya, but then with a quick stomp, will break Shigaraki's hand. Before he placed another foot on the other hand, making sure Shigaraki couldn't hold it. Midoriya would then grab the broken hand before twisting his elbow, dislocating it, where Shigaraki and putting it in a position where Shigaraki couldn't move. As Deku sits now wait here while the rest while the rest of the while the heroes arrive. Eventually the news crew do eventually arrive before the authorities and through this Kirogiri is able to see Tomura and, and is in need of help. So what does he do? He warps Tomura out from under Midoriya. Midoriya would sigh. As he looks at the news, they look at him as wondering what's happening. As Midoriya looks at the camera saying that they have feed from their cameras. He walks past them. They try to ask him questions, but he just walks past them, not saying a thing. Eventually, the entire class would come back to school. The entire class, after a week, would come back, especially after this incident. And they would head off to a summer camp on the bus ride there. <clears throat> Izawa tells everyone to prepare their things and as soon as they're there, they'll be getting into uh, what is um, they'll be getting into not the, uh, and straight into training. So Midoriya already has his bow and um, his bow and quiver ready. But he feels something is weird, so he stays on a bus um, while everyone else leaves. He watches from the window <clears throat> as to um as the wow wow pussy cats eventually show up and send the rest of his class down there. But Aizawa has a sneaking suspicion as he asks if they see Midoriya, but since the students are all already all fighting, he's. Midoriya may have just been in the front. They couldn't see him. 
As he heads towards the bus, Midori is steady and lays there. As the bus eventually makes it down to base camp. Runs out and gets off, he's uh, Midori would eventually get up. Uh, he knew it was a good, great nap, I guess. Before he'd walk out in front of Aizawa, who's a bit bewildered by the fact that he didn't know Midori was still on the bus. And Midori would say, thanks, Sensei. Before he'd walk away into the forest on his own. Training his own shot by himself, hunting the wild animals on the um, in the forest area. Not, he's not going in the direction that Class One A is coming from, but in the opposite. So he's going out to hunt. Eventually, Midoriya would um, Aizawa would send a couple of students to go find Midoriya, where they see him out there eating what seems to be a wild bear. What seems as they can literally see the bear's head and everything. They ask Midoriya how did he kill the bear. As Midoriya reveals his case, she shows in the case is a hidden compartment for for well a sword, the Ronin sword that he we see him use. That we see Hawkeye use in the MCU. Midoriya will place the sword back within his case as he finishes up his meal before he heads back to camp with the rest. As I was saw, is telling them that um, as everyone else is eating, Midoriya sits there, not deciding not to really eat with the rest of the class. Until Mandalay approaches Midoriya, asking why isn't he uh, eating with the rest of his class. As Midoriya says, because they won't be classmates for long. Mandalay asks, what does he mean? As he says, I'm planning on leaving QA, and I don't plan to tell anyone. UA is not what I hoped it had been. I could actually be out there right now doing great work as a hero, as an agent, but instead I'm here doing classes and studying to be a hero. Like I understand training and everything. And then it's a high school, but still. As Midoriya uh, walks away from Mandela, Midori would eventually make it to a mountain area where he sees it as his own way. Eventually, a kid comes there. He asks Midori, what's he doing here? So Midori says getting away from them. Getting away from his class. As he sits there, the kid eventually approaches him and sits next to him. Ask him why doesn't he want to sit with him. As Midori says because he's not like that. They would sit there in silence, silence until they both head back, decide to head back together. As the next day, they would begin training. Midori would go off, obviously, but would actually obviously would go off with Aizawa, who he actually has to train with because Aizawa is really one of, one of the few hand-to-hand -hand combatants there. And that's what Midori is training, training against someone who fights similar to himself. As he brings out his Ronin sword, he rushes towards Aizawa. As he swings it down, Aizawa jumps out of the way. As Aizawa goes to um, wrap his capture tape around Midoriya with a quick and what seemed to be an effortless um, move, Midoriya has sliced the capture tape that was going to head around him clean in half. Midoriya would then rush towards Aizawa at around like 30 miles an hour before jumping over him and <clears throat> using his momentum to place a hand on Aizawa's shoulder. Aizawa would then be brought in, <clears throat> would then receive a knee to the back of the head by Midoriya. Aizawa stumbles forward. He then used the, he then used the, um, he grabs what was the remains of the capture, both parts of his capture, uh, um, capture, Capture gear and wraps it across Midoriya's arm. Only for Midoriya to surprisingly pull Aizawa towards him and with a closed line to lay Aizawa out. Aizawa was quite surprised. He tells Midoriya he's doing good. At the, uh, by the end of training, everyone, um, Class 1B had already arrived and everyone now has to prepare their own dinner and everything. Midoriya again heads off into the forest area. Killing another wild animal and eating that. <clears throat> As many of the of his class wonder why, and eventually Mandalay 
um, with the help of our Zavo, eventually have all the students go out into the forest area to try to find Midoriya and to get to socialize with him. Eventually turn it into a little event. Meanwhile, Midoriya is walking not towards the camp, but towards the mountain area. He eventually arrives there, quiver, in his, um, quiver on his um, and bow with him. As he also trained his marksmanship earlier, <clears throat> along with the pistol and his side holster. Midori eventually makes his way up towards the mountain, where he sees Koda there. They sit there once more until Koda asks him if he can teach him to use a bow and arrow. He also asks what is his quirk, only for Midori to reveal that he's quirkless. As Koda asks, how did he get into your way of being quirkless? Midori says because of hard work. Midori sighs, saying that I don't think I'll be a UA resident for much longer. But he then grabs Koda and then tells him here. <clears throat> he teaches Koda to draw back the bow, even though Koda has a bit of trouble. Koda is able to do it eventually. And Midoriya teaches him to aim properly, get a steady aim, but not shooting an arrow because he doesn't want you know, Koda to hurt anyone or himself. Until a blue fire will sprout out from the forest as the camp is now under attack. As Ndoya grabs his bow from Koda, he hides him into the cave, telling him to stay here only for, well, as they to take off, only for a villain to appear in a cloak. As Midoriya wonders who this is, he's eventually revealed to be the killer of Koda's parents, as Koda said so. It's muscular. Midoriya looks at muscular. As this is a villain with super strength and a random bow and his bow and arrow might pack a punch, but he doesn't know. Might as well go the safe route. Before Muscular can move, Midoriya shoots him in the head two times with the pistol, replacing it back into the holster. As Muscular... Um, as Muscular's body falls dead to the ground, Midoriya grabs Koda and takes him off towards... Um, towards the camp, where they eventually meet up with Mandalay as he heads back into the forest area. Where he eventually comes across Dobby. Dobby tries to attack Midoriya. Only for Midoriya to slice Dobby's arm off, revealing it to be some weird sludge-like um, material, meaning to be made of a weird sludge-like material. As he heads off, he sees Bakugo and them in the sky. They were uh, trying to attack what seems to be some weird guy with a mask. Midoriya was shy uh, as he brings out his bow and arrow. He aims where the guy is going to be and shoots. Mr. Compress hears whizzing only for his only for him to be hit aside the head and losing the marble that he had. It was with Tokoyami within it. As Midoriya says, I guess I can't seem to miss. Anyways, as Midoriya um, runs towards them, eventually he makes it there only to see Bakugo with Shigaraki's hand around him in a portal. Midoriya shoots a hand on shoots an arrow at Bakugo, hitting him in the chest, sending him into um into the portal further. As the arrow bounces bounces off, the students look at Midoriya asking him what is he what did he do? Why did he shoot Bakugo? Saying that he placed a tracker on Bakugo. A tracker. He placed a tracker on Bakugo, and that they'll be able to find him. Later, everyone heads back toward the UA, to the dorms, where um, Aizawa tells him about the situation. Midoriya would overhear Momo saying that she has a tracker on Bakugo, but Midoriya has a much up-to-date one. As Midoriya places in, goes into his room and um, reveals a box, reveals or well, what seems to be a box casing. As he un, um, flips it open, he places an earpiece as he presses it. Coulson, I need you to get an extraction team ready. Where are we heading? Camino Ward. Very well then. How long? I believe it took in two days. Well, and... Tomorrow night. 
Very well then. Obviously, you didn't do it. Be prepared. I will. As Midoriya, <clears throat> as Midoriya begins packing his clothes, he then eventually then dons his gear. As he heads out towards his safe house, <clears throat> gathering as many, but um, all, um moving, um, gather, putting his all all his things there. He then is eventually met up by Coulson, who tells him that a, that the heroes had excavated a team to go retrieve Bakugo and will be attacking in the next hour or so. He will tell them to get there fast. And that's exactly what they do. Surrounding Kamino War, where the heroes are. <clears throat> where All Might is. Midoriya is there, waiting for, um, as All Might opens the door, he's waiting for a clean shot. As he looks around, he notices a reflective surface that shows the inside. As he sprints, he fires his arrow. His arrow hits Kirigiri, which, um, which hits Kirigiri's neck brace, where he knows Kirigiri has a weakness. With an electric, uh, with, which um, releases an electric pulse, which drops Kirigiri to the ground. Eventually, all from one would appear, sending Sugar Rocky away. But as Midoriya saw this, he told Shield to move in. As he shot a tracker arrow onto Shigaraki. Those arrows really do come in handy for Midoriya. As he sees All Might fighting all for one, Midoriya would then send in a couple of. Um, <clears throat> tell All Might, he owes me. You owe me for this, All Might. Before he shoots an arrow. Before All for One and All Might could never notice it, Midoriya, the arrow sticks to All for One's casing. Before. Boom. It blows the cake, um, his breather or his breathing mask off. As it shows off of one's true face. Only for two more arrows to hit his head. As off one screams in pain. It's releasing a concentrated sonic blast, which also causes all my some pain. But since he's a bit further away, it's not as bad. Only for the second arrow to begin beeping. Midori says, bye bye, all for one. It explodes, causing damage to all for one's head. As Midoriya says, huh. Very well. He draws another bow as all for one looks in his direction. As Midoriya smirks at him, he lets it go. All for one goes to grab the arrow, but the arrow, arrow traps faster with the bow off of um, Midoriya's using gets traveling a lot faster. And then arrow is shot cleanly into where, um, into, I don't think all for one has a mouth hole, but how else was he taught? Like, he does have a mouth. Um, so directly into his mouth, the arrow hits the back of his throat. Pause. As all for one hears a beeping. This is what I'm going to have Midoriya be the one to kill all for. As All Might sees the arrow falls from all for one's mouth, All Might uses the version to throw a, a punch at all for one. Sydney can fly up into the air. But Midoriya says, Good job, all. Before, with the press of a button on his bow, all for one explodes from the inside out. No matter how durable he was, on the inside, that's a completely different story. He's, he basically had all for one swallow what was an explosive that he can remotely detonate. As it destroys the literally, the, like in, in like the explosion, literally. Exploded all of his organs on the inside of all four. And all four of his lifeless body fell back to the ground, dead. As all might looked towards the perch, only to see Yami Doria. As he looked and said, Yami Doria. As everyone noticed, as everyone sees all might looking in the direction, the helicopter is there to see the young UA, the quirkless UA student there with the bow and arrow. It no longer drawn. As he jumps down, Everyone would then see a bunch of carib um, a bunch of black cars, SUVs, and vans appear as they gather all for one's body and clear the area of civilians. As they walk to Midoriya, Coulson shakes Midoriya's hand in front of All Might. As All Might looks at young Midoriya, telling him that killing him was the option. Saying that all for one deserved to be in jail, in prison, saying as much as he wanted to kill all for one himself. It wasn't the right thing. Nobody will say, I guess that's why I'm no longer going to be a hero student. 
As Midoriya Bridge reaches for something in his pocket, he has it to me to All Might. He tells All Might to keep it. He won't be needing it. As Midoriya walks away, what's in his hand is you um is Midoriya's um Midoriya's what is this? Midoriya's ID that will allow him into UA. Have the students would wonder why Midoriya handed off to All Might. It would be later revealed to them after everyone will return to their dorms that Midoriya had dropped out of UA, leaving his dropout papers to um on Nezu's desk. <clears throat> that day is Owen having moved everything out of his dorm. Aizawa will tell them that he needs to they need to find Midoriya before Midoriya leaves Japan. He says he Midoriya may leave Japan and they need to find him before he does so. And to get him in back into UA. Bakugo is, is literally adamant about not letting Midoriya back. So they leave him there in the dorms. We see Midoriya at a secret location with Phil. With on the screen showing Fury. As Fury will tell Midoriya that him and Phil will be heading to Japan on the Japan branch of S.H.I.E.L.D. He will be acting as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in Japan. And will be the director of this branch who will work directly under him. As Midoriya nods, he will tell Midoriya that basically he will be handling covert operations along with being publicly announced as a pro hero. With his S.H.I.E.L.D. branch. As Midoriya nods, he thanks Fury. Or the call ends. As a knock at the door is revealed to be Nathasha. As Neku smirks, saying, I guess you'll be here too. And she says, Yeah, boss. That's Midoriya smirks. And Midoriya heads back to what is the house that he's been set up in. As he arrives there, he hears a knock at Well, as he finally gets comfortable and everything, he hears a knock at his door. He hears a bunch of noise. As he opens the door to reveal Class 1A and Aizawa and All Might, and along with the pro heroes there, they barge into Midoriya's house, even though Midoriya tells them to get out. They, um, <clears throat> Aizawa uses his capture tape to, re to restrain Midoriya, telling him what does he think he's doing. As Midoriya says the right thing for me, saying that I'm no longer a hero student at any way. Only for Nezu to come out saying that I can't accept that, Midoriya said. You've been placed under my care, Midoriya says no longer. He reveals to them that he will be heading a government branch here. The director of a government branch in U um, in Japan that allows him to act as both a pro hero and will be taking on other things. He says that he's sorry to leave everyone, but this is what he saw as what's best for him. He is wasting his time and he can do real good work. He wishes them all good luck. And from here, we time skip a month at a time. Midoriya gets receives a call from Fury, telling as Fury shows um tells Midoriya that there is a meeting of pro heroes that he the that the director of the Japan branch of Shield has been requested to enter. As Midoriya grabs um leaves the rest of his agents there, he grabs Romanoff and Colson to follow him. As Midoriya heads towards the meeting place, they're meeting up with Sir Night Eye. Yes, we time skip to what is the work studies. So Midoriya meets up with Night Eye. As they wait for the director of SHIELD to come, it's only revealed to be what seems to be a, what is he wait, did I have you ready? Uh yeah, sixteen year old kid. Ask him what is he doing here. As Midoriya tells them that he's the director of the Shield of the branch of Shield. He's the Shield Japan branch director. As he looks at um Nada, as Nada and Nero says, Ah, oh, saying you're the dropout hero student core student. As Midoriya nods his head, saying, Then what are you doing here? As Midoriya says, You requested me, now I'm here. Now get on with the meeting. Nine-Eye would sigh before going on, explaining about Chai and how he had a girl in his captivity, Eri. They did a bit of research and couldn't find out what her quirk was. Midoriya would look at Coulson, as Coulson would bring up the 
tablets of Midoriya. Everyone wondering what is on it. As Midoriya says that they've tapped into the um, <clears throat> to all of Tarchisaki's restaurants. The girl has a quirk. All of his personal devices that has his research on it. The girl has a quirk that apparently allows her to rewind the time around objects. Or to rewind time of objects. Or um, living things to a certain point. Well, to, well, more than likely, to their death. The girl's apparently six, around six or seven. Parents died in care of her grandfather. Midori will look at uh, Colson, telling him to head this, saying that to get him one is time for him to, uh, more in time for action. And a couple of days later, Colson retrieves him. And they head off towards all for one's, um, um, not overhaul space, not all for one space, overhauls. Midori, when they arrive there, they arrive there with the rest of the pro heroes and they go on attack. Midoriya is there, taking out many villains, until he eventually makes it down towards, with his own combat training and using of his sword, he takes them out, takes out a lot of villains along the way, as him and Mirio make it towards Eri, him making it with Mirio around the same time. So he's at, and when he sees Mirio about to be hit with a bullet, Midoriya breathes before drawing his bow and shooting an arrow, shooting the bullet out of the, out of the air as it falls before Mirio, revealing to be one of the quirk erasing bullets. Midoriya looks at Chai Sasaki as he tells Eri that there's, this is going to be okay. My special agent, I'm Midoriya. I'm also known as the Hero Hawkeye. As he smiles at Eri, he tells Eri that she's going to need to jump. As Char Sasaki tries to grab Eri, Eri jumps out of there. As Midoriya jumps towards her bow already drawn. He catches Eri and as he lets while well, he lets go, as Eri is falling towards him, he shoots above Eri, hitting Char Sasaki with a rope with a rope arrow, which will create a net arrow, well, a net arrow. Which will wrap around Tsaki's body, causing him to fall to the ground. As he catches Eri, he falls down as he runs away. Mirio tells him that he'll handle this. As Midori is saying he's only getting the girl out of out of the danger zone, telling Mirio to get her to the um to get Tsaki to the um no, to the surface. His agents and the other heroes should be there to be should be able to help. Mirio nods. As Midoriya dodges many um, and slices through many of the spikes that Tsusaki sends towards many of the rock spikes that Tsusaki sends towards him. As he eventually gets Eri out of the base, as she sees out of Tsusaki's view, Tsusaki in anger tries to attack Mirio, only for Mirio to use his quirk permeation to get through um, all of Tsusaki's attacks. It's just, as he eventually makes it towards the surface, Tsusaki follows after. He says, fine, I'll play this little game. As Midori is there, he hands Eri off. As, he, as, we're, as Romanov comes towards him and sees the little girl, he tells Romanov to get her away from here in the car now. Romanov eventually gets out and gets down the street before Chisaki would arrive. Chisaki will look around, wondering where is she. He's killed her pro hero, Night Eye. Night Eye is in his hand. As everyone watches as Night Eye essentially vanishes in front of their eyes, leaving not even ashes there. He had used his quirk on Night Eye. As Midoriya stares at him, he tells Mirio that they're going to have to take this seriously. Now, I believe I did have Mirio retrieve, receive one for all. So Mirio would begin powering up using 30%. As Midoriya draws his bow, they get into combat with Tsusaki. Midoriya with a quick bow would send, an, um, would send an explosion arrow, which would blind Tsusaki for, me, for Mirio to come underneath Tsusaki with, with a one for all punch, with a punch to Tsusaki's chin, sending him up into the sky. 
looming noise then sends out a sonic emitter arrow, which begins to release high power sonic waves, which attacks the eardrums of everyone there. But it attacks Shisaki so much that his ears begin to bleed. As Shisaki falls to the ground, Midoriya would tell Mirio now. Midoriya, Mirio would jump up, would have phased through the building and out to catch Mirio. Uh, to, and since it pushed him out enough, he was able to appear next to Shisaki, grabbing his arms, grabbing his legs, and spinning and throwing him towards the ground. But Shisaki would bounce off of it. As Midoriya says, bye bye. With, before, before saying night night, actually, before with an arrow, a gas arrow. Poison gas. Well, you would say goodbye before um shooting off a poison gas arrow. As everyone had cleared the area where they were fighting, he tells Mirio to get back, handing him a mask. As Mirio places his own on, and they begin as it, the mask filters the air. Sasaki's mask had already been knocked off, and he begins to, to breathe the poison gas. Everyone will watch as Sasaki's eyes will begin to bleed, and he begin to bleed from his nose eyes and his ears and his mouth as he eventually convulses and begins and falls to the ground. Mindoria says a relatively fast acting poison meant to kill. You're not meant to survive that. As Muriel looks at Midoriya, Midoriya will tell Shield who will direct his agents to retrieve Antisaki's body. As the agents of Shield depart, the rest of everyone else would go on and to help the injured, Midoriya had to party with him, and Neri was brought to his house. Eventually, Aizawa would come towards um, Midoriya's um, towards Midoriya's house, asking where the girl was. Until reveal, Neri was there. As she walked behind Midoriya, asking who was there, she was quite scared. As Midoriya told him, it was his old teacher. He looked at Zawa, saying that she's now under his custody. And then he's pulled some strings and wouldn't be taking care of the girl from now on. Since he offers much better opportunities for her and much better facilities for her to test her quirk and to actually learn to control it. While also living a relatively easy, easier life. As Zawa says, Muriel was looking for the girl. As Midori says, not to worry. To direct Muriel to this place that he... As he has, as he writes an address, he tells Muriel, he tells Aizawa to have Muriel meet him there. As Midoriya in his ear, Midoriya pushes his ear as he says, fine, take the shot, kill them all. As I was eyes widened, he asks Midoriya what's happening. So Midoriya says that my agents have found the League of Villains. As Midoriya hears the gun shots in his, <clears throat> in his um, earpiece. He then hears confirmation. They've all been taken out, all dead. Confirmed dead by Midoriya. As they retrieve their bodies and everything. Making sure there's no reservations or for the evil scientists. Midoriya smirks. As he tells Aizawa that he's take the legal villains problem has been taken care of. Eventually, when the world hears of the legal villains, um, having, you know, since the legal villains were um, in Japan when they were taken out. And the world sees this, they, and seeing that these weird agents have this weird symbol, and when people, you know, look up the symbol, they find it as a symbol of shield, they call for meeting. Heroes, the uh, present, the hero, um, the hero, the people, damn, what's the hero agency people? The hero public safety commission, along with the public and news, would call for meeting with the director of shield. They ask for, um, for the input on the mission on where the legal villains were while they were taken out in the middle of the street. And Midoriya would answer, saying that he's had a, he's had his people on the um, on the trails of the legal villains ever since they disappeared. He has agents all across Japan taking care of villain threats, while he himself and Musatafu takes care of others. He says. Shield is a government, a global organization, um, global security organization. Then that anything that concerns, anything that Shield does is, is way above the Hero Commission's pay grade. They only the Japan's government of top government officials, which don't include the Hero Society. 
that does it have anything to do with hero society have the um have, aren't on a need to know ba- uh, they're on a need to know basis and they are not Yeah, I would like it if none of your heroes would interfere in my organization's work before we walk out. Many of the hero commissions would be an outrage, calling for the arrest of Midoriya. Only for agents to surround the police officers who try to arrest him, telling them to place their hands on, telling them to put, put their guns down. Midoriya will glare at them, telling them that this is out of their concern. Saying that he's with the higher ups of the world, of the world government, the entirety gov- the entirety of the government. And that this is in his jurisdiction. What he's doing. Before he walks out of the building, his shield agents follow him. And from here, we see Midoriya continuing to be an agent of Shield until he eventually, uh, years later, heads back to the states where he, he joins Fury with Romanov and Coulson. Having helped Japan a bit more and lowering their crime rate, I even after all my and was there when All Might eventually retired publicly, revealing his true form to the world and his successor Mirio. Midoriya was there. He watched, and you could say he was a bit happy. Now there's a lot of things on the story I didn't go for the provisional licenses and everything else, but I plan to have Midoriya leave UA from the very beginning. Be honest, it was like I don't really plan my what is out, but this was something I knew I wanted him to do to leave UA and to continue as a shield agent. I mean, as was why was Midoriya chosen to be the director? He's a bit young, he's only 16. Honestly, I, I am a few big, I don't know why I chose that, but it's you know, it's off the top of the head. I just chose Midoriya. I could have chose Colson, yes, it's true, but no, I just decided to do Midoriya instead. Um, so yeah. So let's continue with the end of this. Um, everyone, um, as by the time Midoriya leaves, most of his classmates had not forgotten about it. Many of them tried to get him to come back to UA, along with pro heroes like All Might, tried to even convince him to come. Even Mirio had come to try to convince him. Now the whole Mirio and Eri situation, Mirio does come visit Eri a lot at Midoriya's house. Um, Noria does go on to raise Harry and everything, and he does take her back to the United States with him when he goes to join back with Shield. But Midoriya eventually settles down with who? Don't care. Don't don't know. Don't care. To be honest, it's not really about his love life in the story. Now. It's not this. It doesn't concern this story really. And I could have did Natasha, but again, I said stated Natasha was an adult when he was fourteen. It's not that way. Not right, really. More like best friends. So, yeah. Um, illegal villains, why I had them killed. To be honest, Midoriya is quirkless. Giving him any plenty of opportunities. My hero gives their villains plenty of opportunities. Instead, I took it in the, age, in the way of Midoriya acting like an agent would. Take out the target. Don't give them any other options. Take them out when you have the shot, and that's what he does. That's why I didn't. I have Midoriya win. He took out the op, the target, not giving them any advantages, which is why he also didn't try to convince Todoroki during the fourth sports festival to at least. Well, he didn't try. Like he didn't successful, successfully try in the sports festival to get successfully try to get. Todoroki to use his fire because it would be too much of an advantage in Todoroki's standpoint as his um, as his artwork is already pretty powerful. I know many of you guys will say the story would go drastically different, but to be honest, this is my telling of a story. I really do hope you guys enjoy it. To be honest, this is one of my first. This is already the first what if I post coming back off this whole month break that I took. I. Hope to see you guys soon. I'll try and upload another video on Friday. See you guys then. It'll be my hero more than likely or Naruto. I'm not sure. See you guys then. What if entertainment out?